All right. What's up, everybody? Finally back. It's been like a week. But uh, I was recovering from a Halloween party. And it got caught up. Got me a short story written. And got a video recorded. If you haven't checked that out, you should check it out. Because I really like doing those. And I kind of want to keep doing them. So you should check them out. So I'll move my phone out of the way. It's distracting. What's up, Phil? How you doing, man? Doom. What's up, Derek? Good to see y'all. Hope you're having a great weekend. I'm having a great one. So tonight I'll be doing the Doom prompt in this new watercolor sketchbook. I'm well. I've already, I'm gonna say I ain't starting it, but I've already started it. I did the first piece for uh, you know, my Watcher or uh, Stranger. Sorry, not the Watcher. That's my comic. Um, but no, I'll be doing it. Um, it's the prompt is here we go. Prompt is a new chess piece, a new custom chess piece, and I'm gonna you know write down what it does as well. So. Uh, I got a really good idea for one, I think. If I can execute it, it'll be really neat. So, I think it'll be cool, though. But, hope everyone's doing good. Uh, as usual, I'm doing fantastic. Being alive and getting to draw is pretty good. Doesn't get much better than that, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I don't exactly know how I'm going to do it. I just kind of had a vague idea. So, But what I'm going to do, my chess piece is going to be the Blind Idiot. And uh, it is a Lovecraft piece. Um, so there is an elder god, or a great old one in, in H.P. Lovecraft's mythos, which of course I'm going to do a Lovecraft one, you guys know me, um, called Azathoth, or the Blind Idiot God. It's essentially the god of all the gods. And he is just this humongous mass that floats through outer space and just destroys everything he comes in contact with. And... Um, he has these little things that float around him called servitors, servitors of Azathoth. They're like these little tentacle monsters, and they had these little horns, and they they blow them and stuff. So like they they, they herald the coming of Azathoth. So it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna I got a really cool rule for him too. Uh, Halloween was awesome. Halloween was really good. I got to got to dress up like a Viking. I got to party with my friends on that weekend. Got to hand out candy. I went to my first haunted house. I know you guys are like, oh, that's crazy. You've never been to a haunted house. Well, listen, when I was a kid, uh, my mom really hated haunted houses. And I was always like, I don't know, I was like this weird like empath type kid. So like, I always just picked up on everyone else's emotions and just kind of, you know, displayed those. But um, so I was always afraid of ha haunted houses when I was a kid. And then as an adult, I just never had time and never went to one. But I went to one, and it wasn't like scary or anything. But it was it was really fun. Like I was very surprised. It was that this uh, right. It was like two streets over. It was really close to my house, and uh, they did it in the basement of this uh, behavioral. It's like a counseling place, and they did one in a theme. They do one every year, and the theme was um, like alien abduction. It was actually I was incredibly impressed with what they did. Like they built a whole spaceship in the basement, and like you would be walking around. And then you would get like, you would go down this one hallway and, and you'd have to circle back around. And by the time you circle back around, they changed the walls. So you'd have to go down a different path. So they took the area and you had to walk around it twice essentially, but it was different both times. Really cool. I like it. Was a, God, it was a great idea, man. It was, it was pretty neat. Uh, oh, I'm doing awesome. What's up, Shannon? What's up, Howard? How you guys doing? But yeah, so my Halloween was really cool. I liked it. They got me some grape juice and, you know, went through a haunted house. <laughs> Okay. So we're gonna work on this piece some. I think it's gonna go more like this. It's gonna kinda balloon out at the top. And just have a base here. And I like the idea for what I have too. So um, let me see. Oh, dude, it cracks me up. I'm, I'm going to eternally use that, <laughs> that picture. How I left the teeth there kill me. <laughs> it's already by my teeth. It's just real funny. <laughs> I love me as Bob Ross. It cracks me up. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so essentially, as I thought, there's a bunch of eyes and tentacles and a big mouth and... Just chaos. He's chaos manifest. But yeah, so. 
I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this. We're just going <laughs> to we'll figure it out. But here's the rules for this guy. So every turn, you have to randomly pick a direction. Up, down, left, right, or any of the diagonals. Um, it can be determined by a dice or whatever. Here's his rules for his piece. Um, you roll it. And when you roll it, he goes completely through the, the the column or the row or whatever. He goes completely that direction until he stops at the edge of the board, and anything he hits is destroyed, is is knocked out of the knocked out of the piece. So it's uh, I think that's pretty cool. I guess the ruling would be you couldn't do that to the king, like you couldn't hit the king. No, I like that idea, because it, it could completely eliminate the game for you or your opponent. And he starts in the middle of the board. He's just one piece. He's one piece that starts in the middle of the board and then randomly just starts wrecking stuff. Maybe you could say, like, it goes, like, every three turns. Every three turns, he just starts decimating everything. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I've heard of Bendy and the Ink Machine. It's uh, I've never played it, but it looked really, really cool. I always heard it was a great game to play. As you know, I don't get to play many games, but uh, I always heard it was a really good game. It's a horror game, right? But it's like a, like a cartoony horror game. I've always heard it was pretty neat. I think it got real popular. Like they have toys and stuff at Walmart. I was like, wow. I just heard it was good, and then all of a sudden it's blown up, and there's toys everywhere. <clears throat> but I hope everyone's doing okay. How's everyone Halloween? Was their Halloween pretty good? I wanted to stream last week, but man, I needed a recovery day. <laughs> I partied hard Saturday, so I needed to recover. And like I said, I was, I was getting some videos done. So I got my video done for the week, so that's pretty good. Posted it today. And I'm hopefully, my goal is to have um, The Stranger Part 2 up next week. And if you haven't watched The Stranger, you should check it out. It's it's a, it's a horror short story I'm writing. Um... I'm almost done with the second part. It probably will have three parts. Um, I might be able to finish it in two, but I don't think I'll be able to. It'll be anywhere from two to four parts. Um, but I'll see. I'll see how the story... Because I don't have a complete story in my head yet. I'm kind of just going with what the story takes me. Because as I was writing the second part, it's totally changed from what I initially conceptualized it as. So I think it'll be cool. See, that's cool. See, I like that. What's up, Troy? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You get the cliffhanger video. You gotta come back for more, man. You gotta keep watching. Gotta keep y'all hanging on, you know. What's up, Aunt, or, uh, Don? I'm glad to see you, man. How's everything doing? <clears throat> Hope everything's alright with you. I know, uh, you, you got, uh, I saw pictures of your town and stuff that you'd sent. It's in Discord, man. That's rough. But I hope you're doing okay. I hope your electricity's back. Is your electricity back on? Because I know you said it's been out for like five days or something, right? What's up, Christian? Good to see you. Yeah, we had a bunch of... Uh, going back, I feel where we have... We live in downtown. So, like, we had a bunch of trick-or-treaters. So, it was pretty cool. I always like giving out some trick-or-treaters. Uh, some, some candy. I always like it when they don't take it all so I can eat it. Yeah, there you go, Shannon. See? <laughs> and that's what, um, we used to live in, like, this, uh, this part of town that was pretty, it didn't really have sidewalks. Like, it was just, it's a nice little part of town, but it just didn't have sidewalks, so we never got trick-or-treaters. I think we maybe had three trick-or-treaters in, like, ten years. We never, ever, ever had trick-or-treaters there. Um, so we always end up with a bunch of candy we had to eat. I don't know why I was so fat. <laughs> but luckily, uh, we quit doing that, so I lost a little bit of weight. Oh, actually, last year for Halloween, I did Azathoth, the story by H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, that was my doom saying last year. But I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely be doing more doom saying. I like it a lot. <laughs> That's right. 
he could be an offering for the greater good. If it uh, if it's killing Troy, you know what, Troy? That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. So, <laughs> no, it'll be it'll be cool. Like I said, three, or two to four parts depends on where the story goes. But um, I'm really enjoying it. I got another one. I've been writing in my uh, I, I, I like I've been writing in my journal, and I got another one called uh, it's the Gopher. Let's see, I started it back. Oh, I have a picture of it. But um. I started one called The Gopher, and it's it's not scary at all. It's pretty just it's silly and just weird. Um, it was really inspired by like uh, I went and watched uh, Neil Gaiman give like a just give like a speech, and then he like read from some short stories and stuff, and it really inspired me to like write some. And I wrote about the first thing I thought of, which was a gopher. I don't know why. So I just started writing the story about a gopher, um, and the whole the beginning of the story is him trying to sneak his way into an antique store, and that's all I'm going to tell you. But that'll be that'll be a story soon. Oh, cool. Thank you, Troy. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I'm working for you, Christian. That's all, man. Yeah, it is. I agree. The, the layout is kind of weird, but I do like it. Like, I, everything's kind of rounded and cool. Like, uh, it's going to take me a second to get used to it, but I kind of dig it. I really kind of do. No, I don't, I don't hate it. So. Well, let me see here. I appreciate that, Troy. Yeah, man. Um, it's funny too because like I've always, I would much, I feel much more comfortable putting out drawings than I do write, uh, writings. I guess writings is work, does work, but like rather than putting out short stories or like poetry or something, I used to actually. I started a YouTube channel before this channel, um, where I had like, uh, I was posting my short stories and stuff on it, and I just, I don't know, I got really uncomfortable with it and just quit, and I was just, I just, I don't. I'm much more critical of my writing than I am my drawing, and my drawing is still not great. Like I'm, I, I'm very, very lacking in, in my drawing for sure. But I'm ten times more critical on my drawing or drawing or writing than I am my drawing. And I wonder if that's I don't know why exactly. Like I'm thinking maybe it's because like I don't know writing seems a bit more intimate. Like I don't know. I, I think maybe it's like maybe it's more like an intellectual thing, and I always feel like I'm kind of dumb anyway. So <laughs> it's just kind of like exposing me, my dumbness to the world. <laughs> so I don't know what it is, but um, but I don't know. I, this channel, doing doing all the art stuff on this channel, which I was uncomfortable with posting that anyways. But I started with like you know um, like Instagram. I start posting pictures and stuff like that, and then people are like, oh, this is really cool. And then I started setting up at art shows and stuff, and people were like, yeah, this is you know. And then the more I guess the more um confidence I built it, it allowed me to start showing my art and stuff on YouTube and then when I did that I was like I'm really comfortable now like I'm, I'm able to stream like it doesn't bother me it's just a little it's like a step-by-step -step process and then I've I posted a couple stories and you guys liked them a lot and I was like that's cool so I got a lot more stories I've written um I got a, a, my Google Docs is full of them so I can definitely um I can definitely post more and I will because I really enjoyed it so so yeah, I I, uh, I love it. I really um, I don't know. I think I would I would have. I wish as a kid I'd been pushed to like do more creative stuff, like write and draw more. And you know, I played guitar a lot as a kid, which is good. And I drew a lot as a kid too. But I was never like encouraged or pushed to like I should like I should have been when it came to drawing and uh, writing. I hardly ever read. I, I I couldn't tell you unless I had to read for school. I didn't read, which kind of sucked. I wish I'd read a lot as a kid. <laughs> Um, let's see. That's wild. Uh, is it just like, is it not a good uh, trailer park for like candy? Because, I mean, trailer park you'd think would be a good place for candy. Like, because it's like a little group, you know? You got like, it depends on how many trailers are there, but you can get some good candy on that. Okay, so let's see. Well, I'm glad you made it, Anna. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> oh, that sucks, Don. I, I missed your comment up there about no electricity and you have to sue for a gas generator. That sucks, man. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to do something. I mean, that sucks. Yeah, I know you said you had already gotten a ton of stuff already posted, so that's good. So you're a good thing you're way ahead of schedule. Because if I lost power right now, I'd be screwed. You guys wouldn't be watching me for, well, dog got power back. <laughs> so that would suck. Uh, thank you, Christian. I appreciate you liking the video. 
it's subtle changes, Shannon. It's not like super big changes um, to the layout of YouTube. Um, it, they're very subtle, but like, like you can tell like rounded buttons and stuff like that. It's nothing major, but it's cool. Like I don't mind it. Okay, we gotta find our perspective here. Um, I need a ruler. But, uh, being the awesome artist I am, I never really have one in hand. Here's a little one. This little one should work. No, oh, that's wrong. That's a wrong line right there. Wrong line. Straight enough, right? That's what they say about me. I'm straight enough. <laughs> I'm just trying to give a little bit of background to it, so we're gonna have a ch having a chessboard, a little bit of a chessboard. You know what I mean? I love chess. I wish I was good at it. I am so terrible at it, but I really, I love the game. I love the history of the game. I sit and watch hours and hours of YouTube videos of just like, of you know, chess and chess highlights and stuff like that. It's weird too because I'm I'm really bad at it, but I really respect people that are good at it. So, ah, okay, so it's just like a spoof on uh, Bendy's, just a sort of a spoof on uh, um, Mickey Mouse. Okay, more uh, you know, kind of like supposed to be like them. Yeah, I guess that's what it is, Anna. It's it's more like yeah, you can. Uh, but honestly, you would think with with kind of having that that a bit of objectivity. I mean, like you would think it would be more nerve wracking to post art than it would be to post, um, like drawings and stuff than it would be to post writings. Because I mean, you can see it, you can read something and be like, you know, well maybe I didn't understand that, you know, so maybe it's better than I thought it was. So I don't know. I'm going to go and clean the pencils up. I've been trying to do that a little bit more, too. Clean the pencils up on stuff. Um, so it's not so sloppy when I go to ink it. Seems to help a little bit. That's how I did the stranger, and I think it, uh, it turned out a little bit better than I normally would do a piece. So, But I'm glad you guys like that story, man. It's uh, I really like doing that stuff. Like if, that's, if that turned into my main thing on YouTube, I would totally be happy with it. Because, uh... I haven't done an unboxing in a while, and I just, it's getting too expensive. I just can't, I literally just can't afford it. I mean, with, honestly, groceries. I mean, that's one of the reasons, like, I, I gotta afford groceries, I gotta afford my bills. I hardly have any money left at the end of the month any, anymore, so. Inflation's killing me, man. What's up, Angela? Good to see you. Oh, do you like Halloween ends? I've heard people say it's good, but then I've heard people say it's, like, the worst thing ever, so I don't know. I learned not to listen to people anymore. <laughs> that'll, that'll stop you. That's good. <laughs> well, I'm glad to know something will stop you now. <laughs> it's funny. Of course, he's got to have big, sharp teeth in his mouth. That's what they... It's weird, too, drawing. This is like a... I've been tightening up pencils with a, a .5. Let me get this other good pencil. I've been using the cheap open. I actually really been loving that. I've been liking the big pencils a lot, too. Let me, let me try my old Kuratoga. I like that a lot. It's got really good... Like, the lead on the Kuratoga is really good. You know, the pencil helps you draw better. What's up, Jamie? Good to see you. I'm glad everyone's here. Man, we got a good crowd, and I like this. Glad y'all are hanging out with me.
But I'm excited, man. I started a new sketchbook. I still got a few pieces to finish in my old sketchbook. Like, I have a really cool uh, Vecna I need to finish. I will, I'll finish that eventually. I'm going to do a video on it. Yeah, I might have to check it out, too, because I actually watched a few Halloween movies for... No, I just watched one Halloween movie. I just watched the first Halloween, which is great. I can see why it's so, it was so good and influential, like, when it came out. But, I mean, honestly, like, after seeing all the horror movies I've seen, the first Halloween, it's, like, kind of boring by comparison. You know what I mean? Like, it's still a classic. It's still a classic. I still respect it. And I love the movie, but objectively speaking, there's better horror movies. I mean, that could be said about most things, though. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. This would be cool. Do some, like, weird, like, veiny textures here. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, Doomtober was great. I'm so glad you guys participated in that. It was I forgot to kind of tell you all. I told you in the in the Discord, but man, Doomtober was awesome. Everyone killed it. Like I loved everyone so much. It was it was good. So I appreciate you guys. Um, oh, um, Jamie, it is the uh, Doom prompt from the Discord. So the Doom prompt was um, uh, make a new chess piece, like design a new chess piece, and then tell what it does. So my new chess piece is going to be called the Blind Idiot which is a Lovecraftian monster, uh, Azathoth. He's also referred to as the Blind Idiot God. And he, um, he, uh, his, his ability, not his ability, but his uh, movement is going to be, he starts in the middle of the board. He cannot, be he cannot be captured, so you can't take him off the board. And then every three turns, he, um, you roll, you randomly decide which, which direction he goes, up, down, left, right, or one of the diagonals. And he might not start in the middle of the board because that might suck for everyone. I don't know. You, you pick a direction. Either way, you pick a direction. And then you uh, you roll a dice, a D8, whatever, and then he hit, he goes in one of those directions and he everything he hits gets eliminated. Everything he hits gets eliminated off the board. So it may have it to like, if you, if you move to capture him, you can decide to move him in a certain direction. That's kind of cool. I like that idea. So yeah, I don't know, just something cool. <laughs> I need a, a bigger circle drawer. Hold on, give me just a second. I'm gonna go grab my ruler box. Hopefully my other circle stencils in here. Probably not. Yeah, it is, woo. Ha-cha-cha. That's what old Jake needs. Let's see, sorry if I'm missing the stream or our chat's going by pretty fast, so sorry if I'm missing something. Ooh, I'm excited to see what you do with gouache, Don. I'm, I'm not loving it. I, I need to try it more. To be fair, I haven't tried it enough. I love pieces that people make with gouache. Like, I love the way it looks, but I just haven't gotten good with it. I need to try it too, uh, too so. Yeah, well, Connor Favorite looks really good. Yeah, get back into art and in some art endeavors is always a good idea. That'd be cool too. You could roll to determine where he starts. Hmm. Yeah. Because what there's sixty four squares on a yeah you'd roll a d sixty four essentially, and he could just start on one person's square, any one square. It doesn't matter who. So. It could uh, be really good for you or horrible for you. I 
Oh, I finally got around to start. I started House of Dragon. And boy, howdy, I love it. I think it's really, really, really damn good. Like, I was really impressed with how, how good it was. So, I'm not done with it, though. I've only watched the first four episodes, I think. And, man, you can tell that, like, George R.R. Martin was really in charge of the story. Like, which I love the fact they did that. I'm glad they at least learned from their mistakes. And from what I've heard, The Winds of Winter, the next book, is like three-fourths of the way done. We'll see. But... I hope he finishes it, because I really want to read the books, but I refuse to read them until he finishes all the books. You know? I don't want an incomplete story. Oh, I feel you, Phil. Man, work for me has been absolutely bonkers. It's starting to slow down a little bit now. End of the year usually gets that way. Oh, that's a good idea, Don. Practicing with, like, opaque watercolors. Yeah, oil pastels always have to be fun, too. I'll tell you what, man. Um, Christian, this right here is like 30 bucks. This I've loved this. This is what solidified watercolors for me was this right here. The the Cotman, uh, Windsor Newton Cotman watercolor travel palette or whatever. Cotman's good stuff. Like, I like it. It's, uh, I mean, I've never, I, I don't think I've tried the professional stuff. So I, I can't, I don't have anything else to compare it to. Uh, except for really crappy, like, cheap watercolors. And they sucked that's what it, honestly bad watercolors is what kept me from using watercolors for a very very long time so i would suggest um if you want to see whether or not you'll like watercolors i would invest a little money into them but i mean 30 bucks this is 30 dollars. that's not a huge investment so i would i would try that see if you like it and if you don't like this you probably won't like watercolors but this i loved it it's like i said it's what made me love watercolors I have used it so much. Like, I've actually, like, went through most of my paints, honestly. Like, I've, I've even had to buy refills and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, except for the... I haven't used blue hardly at all. White, I mean, I don't use white, whatever. Uh, white's kind of a waste. But I need to go and um, change all these out. But, you know, whatever. I'm still using them. I will eventually. Ooh, circle I need. I love templates, man. I need to get a few of those. I need to start using them more. I love little stencils and stuff too, because I have like a. I bought a bunch of stencils from the uh, the Dollar Tree, I think, and they're just little fun things, you know. I was gonna use them for like, uh, um, for airbrushing and stuff, but I never really got around to doing it much. I need to airbrush more too. Um, I airbrushed a miniature. I need to paint them. I don't know if you guys like watching me paint miniatures or not, because it's kind of hard to see. But this is my. Uh, uh, I just put a layer of. I did Zenithal highlighting, which is when you tone it all black and then you do white airbrush from the top so he had like it catches all the highlights and then i just did a layer of brown on his whole body because i'm going to paint most of his uh gear is going to be brown think of him he's like he's a goblin and his name's grift but he's like uh think of clint eastwood used a bow you know it's like the high plains drifter but the high plains grifter is his name uh but it's my goblin miniature he's a goblin fighter archer named grift but uh yeah he's gonna be a fighter wizard he's pretty cool but i like him I can't wait to paint him. He was for an uh, adventure we were playing recently. <clears throat> okay. So, get back into my drawing here. I don't know why I'm getting so, like meticulous with these circles because I gotta ink them anyways but whatever whatever I'm not gonna get too detailed with everything because like I said I gotta ink it but I figured this would be kind of a quick one so I figured if uh, I did some uh, I did some tighter pencils it would take up more time also make it make for a better picture so who knows this may take nine hours we'll see Hope to God it doesn't, but you never know. Not with this guy. Oh, this is cool, too. Um, I got me some Apothic Dark for tonight, and it's like a, a limited edition, like, Halloween bottle. That looks... The design, man. This is what originally got me to buy them was the, the cool labels, and then uh, this is the Halloween label, and it's really, really sexy. I like it a lot. 
Cookie cutter is a good idea, actually. Yeah, <laughs> High Plains Grifter. I like him, man. I love me some uh, some Clint Eastwood, so. Yeah, yeah, I agree, uh, Angela. And the more I've used them, uh, the more I, I, I could tell, like, any travel kit would work. You know what I mean? This is just the one I started with. But there's so many, like, decent ones out there. Just you could buy a little $2 one and then just fill it with whatever paint you want, and it would be awesome. But this right here, I didn't know where to start, so this is a great starting point. I agree. And I don't honestly, I don't know how much I plan on going past this. I mean, I might, but it it does everything I want watercolors to do. You know what I mean? Like I go, I have a, I don't know. I just do everything. I do everything. I do every kind of medium, and I, I like jumping around. Um, so I like kind of you know staying on my toes. So one day I'll be doing like type pencils and like realistic stuff, and then I'll do inking, and then I'll do my tone sketchbooks with markers and colored pencils. And that's what I did last week, or a week before last, because I didn't want to, you know, it's been a while since so I did markers. So I didn't want to, like, you know, not do markers forever. But I'll, I enjoy, like, uh, hopping back and forth. So I don't think it'll be wise for me to go and invest a bunch of money in watercolors um, when I jump back and forth so much. So I think the best thing to do for me is to stick with, like, this is good entry-level stuff. I'm happy with it. So I don't want to... I don't want to upgrade if I ain't gonna use it a lot. You know what I mean? With that being said, I've I watercolor a shit ton. I watercolor way more than I do anything else. So, I mean, I had a uh, an, an ellipse. What if I got that here. No, where's that? Because my circles are kind of off here. That's fine, whatever. I don't care. Man, I've only had like a glass and a half so far. And I'm, uh, I'm kind of feeling it now, Mr. Krebs. That's me, Angela. Um, that's what got me drinking wine, to be honest. Because the first time, the first few times I tried wine, I was, or sorry, grape juice, I wasn't huge on it. Like, I wasn't huge on it. It wasn't what I liked. I just, because mo mainly when I tried it, like, my girlfriend would get like purple toad. And I was just like, oh, this is gross, it's too sweet, disgusting. I didn't know like there was drier wines like this. And the first time I really tried wine, I didn't really drink at all. So if you don't ever drink at all and you try wine, you're like, ah. <laughs> see you know what I mean? So like, yeah, it's my go-to. Like uh, my local Kroger has it on sale for uh, Apothic Red for seven eighty nine a bottle, which is crazy cheap, I think. Um, Apothic Red and uh, Night Hawk Black. I get it in a, I get it in a box. You can get a box of Night Hawk Black for like $18. It's got four bottles in it. And it's 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 comparable to uh to Apothic, I think. It's really, really good. Okay, no problem, Don. I agree with that, Angela. Um this paper right here, uh set this Grumbacher, um uh, someone was telling me it's good stuff. I'd never heard of it, and this is the this is what I've been painting with. I mean, that's what I filled my other watercolor sketchbook up with, or uh, the other watercolor sketchbook I filled up was Grimbacher, and I love it, man. It's 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 my favorite thing to paint with. I mean, I've spent decent amounts of money on paper and stuff, and it's just my favorite. It doesn't hardly curl. Um, the it and like I said, I've told you guys this before. This feels like a cold press side, and this feels like a hot press side. Like it's real smooth. Um, it's probably not, obviously, but it, it it almost has like both on each side, you know, or one on each side. I love it though. I think it's really good. And the coolest thing, pages come out. I've showed you this before. If you don't know, pop pages out like that, and you can pop them back in. Pretty cool. So like the uh, when I did the stranger, I actually pulled it out of the sketchbook. You know this first page, this right here. Pulled it out, taped it down to my board. You know, watercolored it, and then popped her back in. So yeah, I think it's really cool. I, I just love little things like that. And it's like a patent pending thing. You know, the the tearaway pages. So it was fun, fun stuff. I love watercolors. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, Christian, if you're wanting entry level, this is the best way to do it, I think. 
my personal opinion, because it's the only experience I have, for entry level, this is the way to go. It's the Winsor Newton Cotman uh, Travel Watercolor Kit or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's great. You can get it on Amazon, like I said, for like 30 bucks. Yeah, I agree. There's not been any um, any sort of like effects I haven't been able to do on this. Like I've done the thing where I use the salt. Um, I've, I've masked, and it all it all seems to work pretty well. So, granted, I don't do a lot. I'm not experienced enough with watercolors. I do what I like to do, and that's about it. You know, I don't experiment a whole lot with watercolors. If I can get the effect I want to get out of it, that's all I care about. Give me some like little sicky icky tentacles here. Make them all nice and rigidy. Don't think I like about like tentacles are so like you can do them so differently. You can get real smooth ones. You can get all like rigid and gross looking. Like I love that. Um, sometimes when I do Cthulhu's tentacles. I'll do them like this. Like I'll do like little bends in them. So it kind of looks like they have like almost like little sections, which I think is super cool. Tentacles are fun, man. I've always loved drawing those. Oh yeah, the salt thing's really fun. Like when you you uh, you know wet the background, you paint it or whatever, and then if you drop salt on it, I'll do it on this one just to show you. Um, whenever you put salt on it, the salt absorbs the water, so it kind of sucks all the water and color up, and then when it dries, you can just wipe it off. So you have like these cool little splotches of like lighter areas. It looks really cool. I don't have a. Uh, I don't think I have a piece handy. Um, I don't. I don't have a piece handy that I did that with. It's over there in my, my thing. I'll have to dig through it and I ain't doing all that. But I'll just do it on this one so I can show you. Sometimes I screwed up doing that, so. Salt's a cool little technique, though. Um, I don't know how it works with, like, cheaper, like, Crayola and stuff. So I'm not, I can't swear it'll even work on that. But I know with, like, you know, decent watercolors and stuff, it'll work. Granted, I've never used Crayola, so that might not even be bad. I've seen people use Crayola and make decent stuff, so. Mm. Sorry, let me go up here and read what was going on. Yeah, but this is different. Who's got a case of bottles? Case of bottles? Who's got a case of bottles? Case of bottles of Apothic? Or are you talking about the Nighthawk Black? Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, $7 at Walmart. I advise you, for Christian, for 40 bucks, you can get this and one of these. And it's, 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 my, it's my preference of all the paper and all the watercolors I've used, which isn't a ton. Keep that in mind. Very inexperienced with it. But this is my preference. I love it. Like, I've got, um, I had some, like, decent quality Strathmore over there. I don't like it. I like cheap Canton uh, pa watercolor paper more than I like uh, Strathmore. Like, you can get the Canton stuff that has, like, it's like XL, like Canton XL. Um, it's way better than Strathmore, I think. I hate Strathmore watercolor paper. I love Strathmore paper. Watercolor paper, I don't, I don't know. The kind I have is just garbage. I don't like it. Um... Maybe it just, I don't know, is it a bad pack or something, but it was so bad for just like tearing up and, and flaking off and stuff. It was awful. I'm just starting, I think. I think we're good to start. What do y'all think? I think so. You should. Yeah, I like cheap stuff that's good. And this is cheap and good. Like me. <laughs> good as in morally speaking. I'm a good person. What's up, Creative? Good to see you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Always good to have you here. Good. I love lurkers. That's my favorite. I haven't noticed it being sized poor. Like, is it not properly sized do you mean or is it just like the dimensions i use are just unusable because i mean i got like love my 14 love my 17 you know 9 by 12 stuff like that 
Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. And Oh, you're good, Don. Hope everything's all right. I hate that you don't have power, man. That really sucks. And I'm glad you like the monster creative. It's Azathoth, the blind idiot god. I'm excited to start back on my comic book though. I'm gonna I have a couple commissions to do, but I'm gonna start writing on the comic too though. So I got the comic pretty much written. I've started thumbnailing it and stuff, so I know, I suck. But I'm my goal is to get it done by the end of the year. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get it all drawn and started start the inking process more than what I did on stream, because I haven't done any more since then. Um but I get the week of Christmas off. So I'm going to try to get it finished up in the week of Christmas. That's that's my goal. So if I can do that, man, I'll be rocking and rolling. Start the new year with a new comic book. Hell yeah. Have the Setterson done. And then I have a couple other stories I'm wanting to tell. I think the next book I'm going to make, like the, the zine, um, is going to be like a book of short stories. With like a couple drawings here and there in it. Because I've really enjoyed drawing lately. Like a whole lot, so... I think I want to stick with doing that for a little bit. You know, I think it's it's really helping me too, like creatively. Like it's uh, writing's different, man. It's a different beast. Um, it's very it like stimulates a different part of my brain. I can really like turn my mind off when I draw and just just let the creative. It's like very left side of my brain, you know. Whereas there's a good balance of left and right side when you write. Like you gotta you gotta use both sides of your brain. <laughs> Well, that's good, Don. I'm glad you're being positive about it. That's that's awesome, because it's a it's a rough spot for you. So I'm glad you're uh, you're you're looking on the bright side, you know, the side closest to the candle. <laughs> that sucks, though. I, I I feel you. What's up, Paulo? Good to see you, man. It kind of does look like a tree creature. Yeah, it does. It's just kind of twisting and, you know, making its way down into the uh, the base of this uh, the base of this chess piece. Yeah, that's a horrible base. <laughs> I sucked at that. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. I'm glad you like it, Troy. I'm, I'm hoping it'll be cool, because I'll tell you one of the things that inspired it is while I was reading the Dark Tower series, which I finished it, and if... I don't, I need to know where you're at if you haven't... If God, it's so good. It's so good. I love the ending, but I can see why a lot of people hated it. Like, it's very divisive, but I loved it. Um, But in the... um, In, like, the hardcover books, they have... Uh, uh, Barry Windsor Smith, I think, did a lot of the drawings. Like a lot of the piece, they they had a like piece like every fifty pages or so, twenty to fifty pages, and they would have like a piece they draw. It was excellent, and I'm like, man, I want this. This is what I want to do. So I'm gonna do my short stories, and then like have little pieces in between each one to kind of, you know, draw what what was in the story. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, DS Jakecraft. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> this this is definitely gonna be watercolor, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a uh, horrific watercolor painting. Why do you hope it's not watercolor? It's a, it's what I like to use. <laughs> Where's that power of positivity? You were just talking about it. Now you don't want me to do it. Be positive. Be supportive. Let me draw my horrific looking monsters as much as I want in watercolor. <laughs> oh no, I was like, what the hell? I forgot I had this. Oh, 
I'm gonna go with a fine liner. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Wizard Glass is really good. Oh, I agreed on. Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. But yeah, the art's great in it. I loved it. And I can't remember if it was Bernie Rotson or Barry Windsor Smith. I think, you know, actually, I think it was Bernie Rotson. I think I was wrong. It's incredible, though. Like, the, the art in it is amazing. And it made me think, like, man, I was like, man, I really, because I, I love writing and I love art. I love drawing and stuff. So, like, it's a good way to combine. Which is why it's always been, like, a, one of the things I've done on this channel. Um, I hop around from it time to time. Because it doesn't seem like people like it a whole lot. But, you know what? Hail people. <laughs> I don't care what y'all like. I need to do me. I do care what y'all like. But seriously, though, I'm going to do more stories. So I'm glad you guys do like them. I got it, man. It's my creative outlet. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm gonna use my. I have the biggest palette. I have the big. I have a bigger palette than anyone in the world. Like maybe of all time. So, in the words of our ex-president, it's tremendous. All right. So yeah, look how big this palette is. It's awesome. It's huge. It's very bigly. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people appreciated my cult prompt. <laughs> Which was just a crazy trumper. Crazy MAGA. MAGA maniac. Bald headed brothers and whore, that's right. <laughs> oh my god, check this out. Hold on. You mentioned brothers and whore. I gotta show you this. So. My girlfriend works with this lady who would go all out for Halloween. Like, she would go all crazy for Halloween. And then she, I guess they moved or something? I don't know, so they don't really decorate for Halloween anymore because they don't have good trick-or-treaters. So she sold us all of her Halloween stuff, and it's incredible. Like, awesome. So we've, we've already put it all up for the year, except for one piece that I had to keep in my room because I was so excited for it. Look at him. It's the Crypt Keeper. Oh, it's so sick. We got this for like $5 or $10 or some shit. Like, it's cheap as can be. Even though it has Made in China stamped. I don't know why they stamped it there. Stupid. But look how awesome that is. Incredible. Love it. Okay, that's it. That's just wanting to show you that. <laughs> Do not encourage him. <laughs> Encourage me all you want to. I don't need your encouragement to be a maniac, so I'm going to do that regardless. Your encouragement just makes it, you know, more fun. That's all right, Derek. I promise. Plenty of fish in the sea. And you know what's better than get finding another fish in the sea? Swimming alone, man. Sometimes that's just better. <laughs> You're all right, I promise. Also, you got your whole life ahead of you, man. Because, like, there's... I mean, I've dated girls that I can't remember anymore. Like, I've went on dates with girls that I just don't... I don't remember that... I, like, I forget they exist sometimes, so... It'll be very non-consequential in the long run. Yeah, the Creepy sick. I love it. Yeah, I thought it was... And there's another one we have, man. It's It's... It's downstairs because it's huge. It's like a life-size torso that's missing its arms and its legs and has like its guts open and it's like it's missing its jaw. It looks sick as shit. And uh, we got it for 50 bucks. It was, I mean, it, and it's very, very well sculpted. It's like this zombie torso. It's excellent. Man, we got all kinds of cool shit. 
Just saying, I have I have a really good Halloween party. We decorate. We go we go pretty crazy with it. I love it, man. But the Crypt Keeper, I had to keep in my room. I would have kept the torso in here too. I was gonna keep him, but he's just he's too big. <laughs> I didn't have anywhere to put him. Honestly, um, yeah. But I would have loved to have kept him. I think his name was George. I can't remember what we named him. Maybe Carl. I can't remember. I can't remember. Oh boy, this outline's gonna suck to do this when I do it with the big fat pen and the white outline. Yikes. Rain down pallets upon you. <laughs> we'll see if it works. <laughs> I have been getting a little bit of rain here in Kentucky. Like, I've got rain. It's been really windy. And that's about it, though. I usually have to worry about hurricanes much. Now, tornadoes, on the other hand, they touch down all the time. It seems like it's always at nighttime, too. I don't know. It's weird. I haven't used the old file liner in a while, man. This is kind of fun. Your exes keep track of each other? That's weird. That's very weird. <laughs> what? Tell them to get a life. Move on. Boy, you've uh, you've damaged them women. Or men. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying you've damaged them. You've damaged your exes, I should say. Huzzah. Man, I'm liking this already. This is a cool piece. Chess piece, that is. <clears throat> Let's see what the heck. Oh, like the Crib Keeper thing? Yeah, dude, it was, um... Like, I don't know where she got it from. Like, she may have got it from... She may have ordered it online or something. I don't know. But I just know she had a bunch of really good shit. And I bought it all, so... <laughs> it was awesome. For super cheap. Ex-Christians. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Boy, I've missed some, uh... Some drinking and drawing. Even though I missed it for a week, but I love it. So my girlfriend keeps asking me, she's like, why do you keep doing YouTube? Because, <laughs> like, I ain't, I ain't getting any traction. Like, I did all my I did all my Doomtobers, and I was getting, like, 20, 30 views apiece. Which is, I don't care, it's fine. But, like, uh, I just like it. Like, I like, okay, there's a couple reasons I told her. I was like, I really enjoy live streaming. That's absolutely my favorite part. I like creating videos. I like video editing. I just enjoy sitting down and getting a completed piece. Like, it's its own art piece, too. You know, I, I like that. And I also just like... I like having a digital archive of my stuff. Like, I like having a digital archive of all my art. Like, I like having videos and time lapses of stuff that I've done. I think it's really, really fun. I like it. I wish we had pieces all year round. That'd be awesome. I tried to get uh, I tried to get her to leave him out. And she would. <laughs> we we both love Halloween though. All right, sorry. Trying to trying to not miss anyone's comments. I think I think we're good. All right, cool. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these eyes. Options here. I 
don't know why I'm being so like particular about this, but I am. I have a circle stencil, why not use it, you know what I mean? That was stupid, why did I do that? That's not how circles work. Circle work. Oh my god. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I could tell you last time I saw any of my exes, to be honest. I think they all moved off and got better lives. I don't blame them. Next special guest, Jake. No, my girlfriend would never get on the stream. She's very, like, doesn't want to be on camera ever. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, that's fine. I told her we could do a video where we, like, crash stuff together, and she didn't want to do that. But that's fine. It's not for everybody. I get it. Yeah, that's what I told her too. I was like, you never know. I mean, I don't, I don't ever expect anything I do to go quote unquote viral, because the stuff I do is very niche. Like, I think the people that like my stuff, like they really like it, but like, it's only a handful of people. I don't like doing the YouTube thing. I don't want to be some zany, like, hey guys, this is Jake, woo! I don't want to do all that shit. I hate that. Like, I hate those crazy ass YouTubers. You know, they're just putting on a, a YouTuber pers persona to get in all, like, the kids and all. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about that. I just prefer authenticity, you know? Like, you see me in videos, and that's what I am. Like, you know, the most youtube acting you'll see is when i do uh storytelling and that's not even like acting that's just like it's dramatic dramatization you know like i like i like telling my stories with my, my storytelling voice which i don't have a very great storytelling voice but i just i'm trying to learn like how to enunciate properly and stuff um it's storytelling stuff man it's 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 a tough like art form boy that eye looks these eyes are gonna look probably shitty i don't like them so far There we go. I'm just gonna trust. Just trust my gut. My gut's a little better than that ruler. It's definitely bigger, for sure. Also, it's just way quicker just to draw by hand. I don't ever use rulers except for, uh, except for when I'm drawing like perspective on buildings or some shit, or drawing frames for my comic. So, yeah. I don't need to use a ruler now. It's crazy. No problem, Derek. I'll see you later. Oh, she won't do that either. She won't do voiceovers. Trust me. I wish, but she, she won't. Maybe that'd be, see, that'd be cool. She could do Margaret in the, uh, the Stranger video. Yeah. But I don't think she will. She's like very self-conscious about stuff like that. What's up, Absinthe? Glad to see you. So happy you made it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get them, them black areas filled in. My favorite. It's not my favorite, but I love it. Already I've gone outside the lines. That's crazy. Oh, I need to check my fantasy score. Hold on, my fantasy football score. Give me just a second. I haven't done that all day. I probably am getting destroyed. I, this fantasy football season has sucked. Ah! Oh! oh no, I'm probably not going to win. I'm winning, but he's still got like two players to play. Damn it. That sucks. Uh, yeah, I'm going to lose. Dang it. Unless Alvin Kamara dies, I'm going to lose, most likely. I made some good choices, though. But it didn't matter. God. Listen, you all get a chance to play Glenn, uh, Gabe Davis in fantasy football. Don't. He sucks. He's always projected to do really well, and he gives me a big old dumper performance every time. I hate fantasy football. Stupid. Mm. 
Oh, I agree with it, uh, Don. I'm the same way. I'm not buying art supplies until unless I unless I need to refill art supplies, I ain't doing it. You know, and I know you make stuff like you make your watercolors and stuff, which is awesome. And I'm sure it's way way cheaper. But like, man, I've spent so much money on art supplies, especially starting YouTube where I, I had all the uh, the box subscriptions and stuff like that. I just can't I can't justify doing it anymore. I just I literally just don't have the money. Like it's just expensive, man. Like I paid all my bills and I have like two, three hundred dollars in the bank right now. After paying, all, it's I don't even got much money. I ain't, I ain't a rich man, that's for sure. So, and I work 45, 50 hours a week. You know, like I I work, I work a lot. I just live in a really poor area that doesn't that doesn't pay a lot. Luckily, the cost of living is a little lower. But man, it was fine pre-pandemic. You know, I was making I was making ends meet and I was okay and I had a little extra money left over, but. Post pandemic, I just can't afford to go to the grocery store. Like, dude, if we when we go to the grocery store, we go about once every two weeks, and we spend about over two hundred dollars. It's about a hundred dollars a week, four hundred dollars a month. That's up from like we were spending like eighty dollars a week, you know, like seventy dollars a week. That's still that's extra, like hundred two hundred dollars a month. That sucks. That's rough for me, man. So it's been it's been tough. I just, I, like, I literally had to quit getting subscription boxes because of it. Like, if I had unlimited money, then yeah, I would be doing subscription boxes constantly. I'm playing the lottery right now, so maybe. <laughs> maybe I can get me a billion dollars. Yeah, if I win, if I win the lottery, that's all I'll be doing is YouTube. <laughs> that's pretty much my only job. Cat feeding time. That's a very important time. Yeah, I haven't used a, acrylic inks. Oh, I guess I have. I don't like inks. Um, I have ink. I just don't know what's if it's alcohol ink or acrylic ink. But uh, I'm with you. I've experimented with about every with about every medium that I that I would want to, you know. And I've kind of landed on what I like. Luckily, I found one that I never thought I would find one that I hadn't used um, that I would start using more than everything else. But watercolor is definitely it. I have definitely started using watercolor more than anything else. It's cool, though. Like, I like the idea that... And I always say it, and I appreciate it. You guys, I mean, all of you. All, anyone in here that's pushed me, ever pushed me to use watercolors, which is most of you, um, I appreciate it. I really do. Because it, it's your guys' opinion on that. That's what's really started me doing it. Between you guys telling me to do it and getting subscription boxes that had watercolors in them and let me test them out like you guys have are the ones that solidified me using watercolors and it's awesome i love it oh yeah i agree angela well and what kills me okay so here's a small bit of a rant okay get ready okay so what really pisses me off about inflation is that look up any chart any uh any study any numbers any actual statistics on um where corporations uh profits are coming from okay so um well i think it was out of after after all i can't remember who it was that sh that did a did a whole had the charts laid out and everything they gave all the sources it was great but after all was said and done their costs Corporations costs from five years ago was a slightly higher than it is now. Or a slightly higher now than it was then. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. But their markup rate had went up fifty-two percent. Whereas their actual cost rate had went up, I think, around ten percent, something like that. So they all these corporations are charging fifty-two to fifty-three percent more, making fifty-two to fifty-three percent more profit because of inflation they are causing inflation they are doing that they are inflating prices you cannot have inflation and also have record profits you can't sorry you can't blame inflation and then also have record profits if you're like well you know we can't we got to raise the prices because of inflation and then you make more money than you ever made you know go fuck yourself you can't you cannot do that because i can't afford to do shit i can barely afford to eat i'm glad that your ceo has made 14 billion dollars last year but 
you know, I always go back to that mantra of eat the rich. So, I don't know. It just, it drives me absolutely crazy, man. I can't, I can't deal with it. I, I just, I hate so much in this world, and I don't want to hate things. But you cannot be making money. You cannot be making record profits and then complain that inflation is hurting your business because it's not. It's not hurting the business. It's hurting the middle class. It's who it's hurting. It's hurting the middle class, like lower class. A lot of lower class people, they have a lot of gov government subsidies, so they don't have to pay a lot of things like that. So they usually don't have to worry about it. But then you have corporations and billionaires and people who affect our elections directly by contributions to Republicans and Democrats. That's that's what they do. They supply money to make sure that laws are put in place and bills are passed that protects them. Like, people want to say that Democrats are bad, Republicans are bad, whatever. They're both terrible, 100%, because they're both controlled by corporations, because we live in an oligarchy in America. No questions asked. We 100% we're, we're a corporatocracy is what it is. We're ran by corporations. So... Now, granted, socially speaking, Democrats are far better than Republicans. Republicans are un, are evil to a to to an absolutely unmitigated extent. Like they are absolutely pure evil. They don't care. They have no platform. The only thing they do is they harp on fears and xenophobia to 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 rile up their base to get votes in order to pass laws to keep them in power. So they can use the money of corp uh, they can use the their power to to pass bills and laws uh, to to get well corporations billion dollar tax breaks. In 2017, Amazon paid zero dollars, zero dollars in federal taxes. In 2017, I Jake paid more taxes than Amazon. I make dog shit for money. I make hardly any money. And they make billions of dollars a year. They paid zero in federal taxes. How is that fair? Like, I don't understand it because they, they bring jobs. I don't give a shit because you know what happens to all those jobs? They pay taxes. All those people that work for Amazon pay taxes. You know who doesn't? Jeff Bezos. Go to the moon, you bitch. I don't care. I hate him. It's ridiculous. I just, I hate. Oh, you guys got me going. I got myself going, I guess. I'm going to try to draw while I do this. But it's just. It's so, it's so asinine. And then you have these people who shield for corporations like the dumb pieces of shit they are. Why would you shield for a corporation ever? Well, it brings in business. No, it doesn't bring in business. Do you think any, like people who support Trump, do you think he gives a shit about you? Do you think he gives two shits about you? He stole government documents from the White House, nuclear secrets from other countries, and then two weeks prior to him getting raided, a month, a month prior, I can't remember the exact timeline, he got... He held a golf tournament for the Saudis. The Saudi prince was there, and he had nuclear secrets in Mar-a-Lago. You cannot tell me that that treasonous son of a bitch did not sell something or give something away. Like, and there's still documents are missing. They still haven't gotten them all away, or they still haven't gotten them all back. It's it's crazy to me. And then you want to support that guy saying like, yeah, he understands us. You know, he knows he knows what the needs of the American people. No, he doesn't. To be fair, none of them do. I'm not saying Biden does either, but at least Biden isn't unmitigatedly evil. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm done. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, seriously, we need an anti-corporation party. Um, I was, I was uh, talking uh, the other day with my friends. It was funny because we were playing... Um, uh, a game called Cyborg, which is cyberpunk, which is cyberpunk setting is like, um, it's a dystopian future like uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner's dystopian. And, um, and funny, if you look up the definition of dystopian, this was very interesting. I didn't know this until I looked it up. Um, okay, so I'm going to read you the definition and tell me how this differs from what we live in right now. An imagined state or society in which there is great suffering or injustice, typically one that is totalitarian or post-apocalyptic. So, if you cannot tell me we live in a world where there's not great suffering or injustice, please give me an example. Because we live in a dystopian world right now. Granted, not to the fantastical sense of like Blade Runner or uh, uh, Cyberpunk, but we ain't that far off. Like, we, we really aren't that far. We're just like cyberpunk without all the cool shit. 
we're, we're cyberpunk without all the like cool augmentations and stuff like that. Like it kind of sucks, you know. That's I mean that's why I just do art, cause I can't change anything. I ain't a billion dollar corporation. I can't do shit. I mean if I win the lottery, I'm just gonna build the Shire and exile everyone I have ever known, except for the handful of people that gets to come live there with me. Um, and then anyone that comes uh, comes in there gets shot. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to be away from the world because I know it's doomed and there's nothing I can do to make it better. I don't know. It's crazy. <sighs> no, that's the thing. It's like I don't hate Biden. Like I don't like him. I don't. I don't like Biden. He's he's clearly just a politician. He's flip flopped his stances throughout the years. Now, granted, people can change and they can different their opinions, whatever. But when your options are Joe Biden and the single greatest threat to democracy America's ever had, well, you go with Joe Biden. You know what I mean? Like, Joe Biden is the status quo. Status quo is not necessary. Status quo has kept democracy alive. Granted, it's enriched corporations, hand over fist, but at the same time, it's kept democracy alive. Um, the thing is, you, you get Trump in office who could not give a shit less about democracy. He didn't give a shit at all. So he didn't care. He didn't care. It was so much of the American government is based on the honor system. And they assumed that the president would always have some sort of honor, you know? Um, well, they never expected Trump, who is the most shameless piece of shit to ever exist, to win the election. They never expected something, someone like that to be president because they thought the American people, American populace, would be smarter than that. Well, they're not. They're not smarter than that because of systematic dumbing down by corporations over the last hundred years. You know what I mean? Over the, they, they, When you realize that a population is really stupid and you realize that stupid people can't critically think and they can just, you know, be swayed to do one thing or the other, then you want a stupid population because you can control the world make all the money you want. Not worrying about the consequences of that. Okay, I'm done. I promise, I'm done. Yeah, getting a bow. <laughs> Ooh, let me hear him, Paulo. Did you have a radical idea on education and health? I like that. I like radical ideas. We need a radical ideas or else nothing's going to change. Granted, you're not in America, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You will be the Hunger Games. And yeah, Absinthe, get a bow. <laughs> I have my Viking suit. I have an axe. It's the best I can do. I'll get shot for sure. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, progressives aren't, you need, it's funny because they talk about the, the radical left, that's the left you need. You need the ones that have radical ideas like healthcare for everybody, very radical. Um, stopping carbon emissions to not destroy the entirety of the fucking planet, radical. That's what you need. I'm sorry, but a bunch of 80 year olds don't know what uh, the current population of America wants. When you are in the, like, you know, 99th percentile of age, you don't know what the American people want. You need to step down, do your country a favor, get out of office. <sighs> Sorry, I'll shut up. I should do it, Don. You'd have power here, at least. Don't Unless you're in Texas. Don't go to Texas. Yes, beer can armor. It's the way to do it. We'll go fight nerds in the woods for their food. <laughs> Troy. <laughs> we'll meet up. We'll meet up, make beer can armor. I'll have wine bottle Molotovs. And by God, we'll go fight nerds in the woods for their food. It's so funny because people want to make fun of cosplayers for like cosplaying or LARPers for LARPing. What do you think these idiots are doing running around in like fatigues and holding their guns? They're just LARPing. They ain't soldiers because they're too cowardice to go be a soldier. I don't know if this is working when I'm doing these eyeballs, but by God, I'm doing it. This is something I learned from David Finch, but I, like, I totally forgot exactly how he showed me how to do it. 
So I've just kind of been applying it to how my brain works. <laughs> it's, I don't know if it's work, right or not. We'll find out. <clears throat> well, Paulo, um, I've yet to see anything that uh, you said was radical. <laughs> what you said was pure common sense. Uh, yeah. Education and health should be state-owned as they are not the most important part of the social elevator. Um... Uh, if you're lucky, if you're unlucky and you have a disease, you shouldn't be burdened with it. Yeah, I agree. I think at the very least, uh, private, edu uh, private education is uh, just a scheme. To, yeah, I agree. I agree with that totally. So, uh, oh, you're good, Derek. I don't care, man. Leave whatever you need to. Ain't no big deal. You ain't gonna sign no contract. You ain't gotta be here. So if you want to check out, you're welcome to. I ain't gonna be mad at nobody. That's funny. Yeah, you're right. He's the blonde idiot. I guess it's blonde in a metaphorical sense, you know. Sorry, I'm not like picking my nose, but it's itching real bad. I gotta, I gotta blow my nose. I'm gonna mute this and blow my nose. Give me a second. Well. And I unmuted myself. Sorry, Paulo. Um. You know, you can't, you can't gripe at me right now because I did unmute it. But I petted my cats earlier and I forgot to wash my hands and I've scratched my nose and I, it's going crazy on me. Um, let's see. Also, I was a Girl Scout. I don't, okay. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's going to be good. Nursing, knitting, and Girl Scout is, that's probably like the best skills you could have. Like if you're going to be in a Fallout scenario... That's what you need to be. It's funny, too, because me and my buddy, we played Fallout 76 a lot. Um, and I want to get back to playing that. I just have, I haven't had time lately. Um, but we talked about that a lot, too. We're like, man, like this, I understand this is po post-apocalyptic and it's horrific after the Fallout, you know, and there's all these monsters running around. But there's something kind of charming about it. Like, there's something that makes me want to live there. Like, you know, very small communities. You shut up, mute time. <laughs> shut up, Paulo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm muted. You already get the issue four for free. <sighs> yeah, what's funny though is like I have, I, I bought a backpack and everything for, um, to have for like, oh shit scenarios. Like if I need to grab it and run. Um, I got a backpack for that, and I have, uh, I have a bushcraft book. Uh, I'm gonna get myself, uh, like the, uh, I just have, like, I have a handgun. I don't have anything major. So, you know, I don't have any major guns. I, I need, I, like, I know how to shoot it if I had to, but, like, I don't, it's a really cheap gun. Like, I actually been wanting to invest in, like, a better gun. Because, I mean, there's one thing you need, it's a gun. And it's funny, too, because you're like, man... In America, anyways, this is probably not in a lot of other places. But in America, you're like, I never thought I'd have to worry about something like that. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, it's getting there. You know, it's getting there. Especially with these psychotic conspiracy theorists and, like, people who are just lusting for a civil war. Like, they just cannot wait for a civil war. Like, that's all they're wanting. It's craziness. There you go. You actually camp, so you know how to camp. All right. I got a bushcraft book. That's all I know how to do. <laughs> so I can figure it out. I think I'm smart enough to think on the fly, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of considered that too, Paulo. Like, I think I could figure things out for myself, but if I was ever put in a really tight situation, yeah, we'd be dead. <laughs> I'd be dead for sure. Me and my buddies, we talked about this a lot. Like, we're just hoping in the apocalypse we can at least be playing, like, D&D &D by candlelight. And if we can do that... I'll be alright. You know what? The apocalypse won't be that bad as long as I can eat. And I don't have a bank like coming to repossess my house because all the banks have collapsed. And I can eat and if nothing else, grow my own food, play some D&D &D with my buddies. Hell, that's not apocalypse. That's paradise. Know what I mean? 
<clears throat> One man leave. They never seen anything about fighting. That's right. Okay, we're going to hatch a little bit, because I'm thinking this looks kind of like Dookie. Put a little bit of hatching. We ain't going to do too much, because I've, I've kind of liked not doing a ton of hatching on a on watercolor piece. Because I feel it kind of takes away from it. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, people suck, dude, for sure. Yeah, I would survive out of spite. Just to make sure I could be a thorn in someone's side, I would survive. Yeah, I don't I don't expect to uh to last very long. Like I can I can jog for a decent amount of time. That's it though. So unless uh, the apocalypse is slow moving zombies, which it for sure won't be. It'll be fast moving. It like if any I was talking about this earlier, too, uh, this movie, anyways. If there were any realistic zombie apocalypse scenario, it would be 28 Days Later. And I know that's not zombies, but, like, it's the most realistic scenario. Like, essentially, people act like they are just enraged. like Essentially, like a, an accelerated rabies-type virus. You know? So. And if, if zombies were fast, I couldn't do it. I'd be dead. I'd be dead for sure. There's no... There's no saving me from fast zombies. Like, if a slow jog would outrun the zombies, I'd be okay. Like, not the living dead zombies. I'm good. Yeah, Black Friday is the pinnacle of capitalistic just scum. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it, Christian. How am I not dead? Well, they do, though. I mean, for the most part, Don, people do suck. I mean, it's just... People as a whole. People on an individual level, like you guys. Like, you are individuals that I know and that I appreciate. That's fine. Um, but people as a, as a mass society, we just suck. We're just greedy and we're self-centered and we're just awful. You know? And it's funny, too, because I'm a pretty optimistic guy. Or at least I have been lately. Um... It doesn't like sadden me or depress me. It's just it's just the way of life. So like I, I do a lot of like uh, study of philosophy. I study philosophy quite a bit. And uh, Marcus Aurelius, one of his his great Stoic principles he taught was that people are fallible. So don't let it bother you whenever someone betrays your trust or someone's terrible or someone does something awful because people are going to do that because they're just kind of awful. Like so just. Expect it and let it pass, you know? So, I mean, like, I've really tried to, like, I can admit that most humanity is awful. They're fallible. They're very terrible. But I try not to let it bother me, you know? I got my buddies. I got, you know, I got my family. I got my girlfriend. I got, I, I you know, I got what I need. So I'm just going to appreciate what I have. I got you guys. I have art. I have, a, you know, I got a community I can talk to and stuff. What more do I need, honestly? Like, I'm the poorest human in America is still living better than, like, the richest king 500 years ago. You know, like, the poorest person in America right now is someone who has to go to the homeless shelter to get soup and, like, who lives on the street still lives better because they can walk into any store and use the bathroom. You know what I mean? Indoor plumbing. They have electricity. Like, they, they live better than the best king ever lived 500 years ago. So, it's fine. We're okay. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> as, as much as I seem like a big downer, it's alright. Maybe, yeah, maybe, Paulo. Like, people just, like, don't, don't notice you. Like, that's the best way to be in, in the apocalyptic scenario is not noticeable or ignored. And then you're good to go.
Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember seeing that. Um, I can't remember what I saw it on, but it was like, uh, yeah, it was good prep. It actually, I mean, they weren't wrong about that. It was good prep. But I remember seeing that they put out a zombie survival plan. I was like, that's good. Because <laughs> they totally did that for no reason at all. Learning so much. <laughs> it's good. Uh, I was told one time I was in my business what people think of me. Oh, thank you so much, Orion. I appreciate that. Or oh, sorry, Orion. Orion Star One. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. And I agree. It's it's none of your business what people think of you. The last thing I care about in the world is what people think of me. I don't give a shit about that because people suck. I suck. I'm a person. I'm, I'm part of that population of people that suck. So who cares? Who cares what people think of me? And who cares what I think? Who gives a shit? Just live your life. It's really, 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 really short and tiny. And infinitesimal in the grand scheme of the cosmos. So just enjoy your life. Have fun. Live it. Don't hurt other people. And, I don't know. Drink wine. <laughs> and do drugs. I don't know. <laughs> Hell, Satan. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I just don't, like I said, I don't matter. Don't listen to me. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to catch up here. Yeah, the zombie apocalypse thing with the CDC is pretty funny. I like it. It, it It's, it, like they said, it is good. Um, It is good, like, prep. Let's see... So like, so Don, out of your um, out of your like your whole town, like, what's left? Is it like, is it just like, is it just mass devastation everywhere? Like, do you have food and stuff? Can you go to the store and get food if you need it? Or like, I need to, I need to know if I need to send you some potato chips or something. I will. Don't you, uh, you worry about that for a second. Oh no. Yeah, that would be incredible, Anna. I didn't even see that. Um, I heard they were... No, maybe I did. I heard something MTR about that. There was something. Maybe that's what I heard, yeah. I completely forgot about it until you mentioned it, though. But that, yeah, that sounds really cool. Because that's kind of when I was... That's one of my biggest phobias, or biggest fears, is, like, getting cancer. Granted, I've done a really good job of alleviating most of my fears. And, I mean, there's no sense in fearing death, you know. It's another stoic philosophy, memento mori. It's remember death. Just remember that we're all going to die one day. You can't change it. You can't stop it. It's an inevitability. So don't worry about it. I got to burp. Sorry. <gasps> and I kind of have hiccups. That's right, Angela. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I knew Orion Star. I just didn't know if you just spelled it different. Okay, cool, cool. So, Orion Star. I'm glad you chimed in, though. Thank you. I'm glad you sit in the... Listen, I don't mind a bit if people just kind of chill in the background and watch and leave me on his background noise. That's totally fine. Don't give a shit. I appreciate your comment, though. I really do. I, I appreciate you interacting and having fun with the channel. But don't feel like you have to do that. I want everyone to feel comfortable here. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't do it. But just know that I want your opinion. I want you to chime in on stuff. Give me a topic to talk about. I'll rant and rave like a lunatic forever. I don't give a shit. Well, that's uncanny, Dan, uh, Don, that you're the only ones that got hit. Dude, yeah, listen. Uh, Derek, that's a really good way of doing it, man. Like, um, there's a lot of people that draw while watching me draw. And, I, and I'll tell you what, I love you doing that with my videos, too. Because, like, that's how I, like, 
man, all my drawing, all the like the time and effort I put into it, all the stuff, the, the biggest improvement I made in my life was watching David Finch videos and drawing. Like, I would watch his videos and draw what he drew and just try to get, like, and I'm still awful at it, but, like, it, it gave me a huge improvement. I should have done it more, but I'm really bad for stopping what I'm doing, you know. But, um, but yeah, draw what you're drawing, enjoy it, have fun, and learn, man. And I, I really appreciate that you're doing that for me, so thank you. All right, I think we're, no, we're not good. I'm going to put my lines for the board on. I don't have like a degrees thing. I don't know how this works. Let's see. I'm just gonna look. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Boy, I made that way too long. What the hell's wrong with me? That's fine. That's fine. I think that's what it is to Absinthe. I'm the same way. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of suffering before dying. But also the fact of not being around kind of sucks. But I think it's... Uh, isn't that not one and the same? Afraid of dying, afraid of die, uh, death. I mean, it's kind of... Because it's the same means to an end, you know what I mean? Keep drawing Bendy, man. That works. Every time you draw, that improves you, for sure. Yeah, you will. You'll hit 600, though. Don't you worry about that. Oh, dude, yeah, I saw that werewolf by not. He is ridiculous. God, I saw the, his pose. I was just in awe over the pose he drew, that just dynamic pose where he's like, oh, it's so good. David Finch is, oh, oh he's so good. I love him. There you go, Troy. Don't want to be there when it happens. I'm the same way. I'm going to go use bathroom. I'll be right back. Listen to the awesome music by uh, Carl at White Bad Audio. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's me, Don. <laughs> what happens to my art supplies? <laughs> that's right. It's constrained in the finite area of a 64 grid chessboard, but at the same time, it is an absolute uh, entity of chaos, so. I like that. It's funny, you saying that, Just it really just kind of. That's cool. That's a cool way to think about it because it made me think of the juxtaposition of like this absolute entity of chaos on this board of finite rules. That's kind of cool. An infinite madness juxtaposed with an infinite or a finite rule set. Yeah. I'm weird, sorry. I like things like that. Y'all, uh, I was going to try my best to not completely finish this bottle, but uh, I think it's going to happen. 
Yeah, it's gonna happen. I blame you all. So, that's his bad boy. Down for the count. I haven't even started painting yet. Oh, God. I'm gonna call it now. This is gonna be a terrible picture. <laughs> it's gonna be awful. Alright, let's go ahead and erase this. I don't know, like, I don't think Azathoth really has a color. Let me check him out. Because I've only really ever saw black and white drawings of him. He's just a mass of flesh and grossness, I guess. Let me check. Yeah, that's pretty much what he is. Yeah, that works. I see him slightly different than he's depicted. But, you know, all my descriptions came before I ever saw a picture of him. I just saw him described in books, so... Whatever. Yeah, I agree. I, I understand you, Christian. Like, that's, uh, that's, it's... The Void is fine. I'm not really worried about the Void. Because, like, that's the best way I've always heard it explained is, like, what happened before you were born. It's exactly what it's like after you die. You don't know. Like, you, you, you're very unaware of it. You're as aware of that as you are of, you know. Non-existence is the same either way. I know I want to, but I can't. I'm going to make them flesh-colored. I'm going to make the background green, though. We'll see. <laughs> Something's going to be green, probably. But I am going to have to, like... I did way too much over here. Because I was wanting to, like, write a description down this way. And kind of come over this way. But, um... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um. All right. So let's let's start painting. We gotta paint. Oh, it's only seven thirty. Good lord, guys! I've only been streaming for an hour and a half. I thought I'd been streaming for like two or three hours already. You're right. She is. Hey, you'll appreciate this. Listen, I'm gonna get up again. Sorry, uh, Paulo. You'll appreciate this. Um, I don't know if you heard me when I told you I went to go watch Neil Gaiman give a speech and read some short stories and stuff. Um, a few months back, but when I was there, I bought, um, the, uh, the Sandman, uh, uh, Black Label comics, and he sold them, let's see, they sold them for cover price, so they were like 30 each, yeah, they were 30 each, so 60 bucks for both of these, but here's the really cool part, so he sold them for 30 bucks each, and he signed them all. Like, he signed them all and let, he, he basically, like, went to a local bookstore and he told them, hey, order all these books. And he signed them all and let everyone buy them for cover price. Neil Gaiman is awesome. So I have the uh, the first two signed by Neil Gaiman uh, and I bought them for cover price. So that was pretty cool. Neil Gaiman is a pretty fantastic human. I also bought um, The Reader and uh, Norse Mythology by them, too. It's pretty good. Let's see. Oh, I'm glad to see you, Teresa. I'm glad you're here. That's awesome. <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> I just figured you'd appreciate that. Oh, sweet. I love them. I need to finish them. Honestly, I've only read the first uh, the first tray paperback of them. Uh, I suck. I know. I'm. Just, I got so much to read. Like I started Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I haven't finished it. I started Sandman. I haven't finished it. I have so many comics and books to read. Uh, that's. You know what? My biggest fear of dying is my biggest fear of dying is not getting to read all the stuff I want to read. That's my biggest fear of dying. There's so much shit I want to do and want to read and want to create that I haven't got a chance to do and that's my that's what terrifies me with death I don't want to die not being able to finish what I wanted to do ah <gasps> um oh no y'all I'm sorry um I gotta get water I don't have water for my watercolors I'll be right back again sorry 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 I'll be right back I got a jar here I'm gonna run to the bathroom get some water
Man, I even grabbed my jar earlier before I started streaming. I was like, yeah, I gotta go get some water. Didn't do it. I got the water in the kitchen and left it in there, so. Whatever. We're good. I, I don't ever get on Twitter, so I don't really know his Twitter. I, I should check it out, though, because I do like him a lot, so. So we're going to give uh, Azathoth a sickly green hue, of course. So let's go ahead and give him his yellow tint here. Well, that yellow is all nice and saturated. I was painting some goblins earlier and using a lot of yellow. Yeah, I understand that, Anna. Man, I'm, I, I don't really... What sucks is I don't really work overtime because I have to. Like, I have the work to do, but I can put it off in the next day. But, like, I just... I have to, in a way, in like, in a monetary sense. Like, I need the money. I need to work 45 hours a week. or 40 to 45 hours a week minimum. So, usually 45, 50 hours a week. But, uh, lately, I've slowed down some, so I haven't worked as much. But, um... It sucks, man. I don't know. It's rough. I don't want to spend my whole life slaving away. It sucks. Sucks a balls. Sucks a balls. That's what it sucks. I don't know. I just... I want to do art. You know, I don't want to go to the... I don't want to build a rocket and go to Mars. You know what I mean? I ain't no damn Jeff Bezos. I just want to... Sit around and read and do art and not have to worry about paying my bills. That's all. That's all. That's the only kind of rich I want to be. That's all I care about. Like, if I woke up Monday and found that my Powerball ticket won me a million dollars rather than 500 million, I'd be fine with that. I'd be totally fine with that. Because that would uh, change my life to the point where I, I don't have to work anymore. Yeah, I mean, I stay off Twitter. I don't ever have one. Um, I mean, I, I was sorry. I don't ever have one. What the hell was that? That wasn't even a sentence. I do have a Twitter, and I've posted a handful of things to it just for this channel, and I've never got on there and scrolled it. Like, I don't know. I hate Twitter. It's stupid. I don't care. Especially now. I mean, Elon Musk can suck it. I don't really care about him. Or It was funny, too, because he's like, yeah, free speech. And then the first thing I see about it is that the use of the N-word goes up 500% on Twitter. I was like, what a cesspool of a shithole place that is. God. I hope that's what he was envisioning when he wanted to like, oh, free speech. No hate speech is not necessarily anti-free speech. You know what I mean? I don't know. People are stupid. My, my favorite description of Elon Musk is like, he's the dumb guy's idea of a smart guy. You know what I mean? Dumb guy's idea of a genius. When he's like, oh, let's build a... Uh, underground uh, parking systems. Uh, shut up, you idiot. <laughs> Let's build an electric car that can almost drive itself and kill people. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. I'm dumb, too, so... But you know what? It takes one to know one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, you, if you impersonate uh, him, you don't get free speech. That's what there was a lot of... Um, well, also, I, I read, what was it, Friday? People Thursday or Friday, people had woke up to a letter saying that essentially he made mass layoffs. A bunch of people got laid off. My favorite thing that happened was um, when he was like, hey, we're going to start charging $20 a month for the uh, the verified blue check mark. And <laughs> Stephen King's like, uh, you should be paying me you know, fuck off. And he's like, well, what about $8? <laughs> and then I saw, I saw like, oh, how, how great it is to see Elon Musk beg Stephen King for $8. <laughs> it's pretty good. It was a good time. Oh, man. Okay. Actually, I'm not going to blow dry yet. I'm going to go ahead and color my board black.
I don't blame you, Teresa. Like, I have a Twitter, but seriously, you can check it out. It's, uh, it's Domeslagren, which is Doomslayer in Norwegian, because I like Norwegian. Uh, but you can check out Domeslagren, and it's, uh, I've posted a couple videos, like, I've done on there, but that's it. I have, I very rarely have I commented on anything or done it, shared anything. I haven't been on Twitter in probably six or eight months. I don't care. I don't give a shit about Twitter. If I've liked more than twenty posts, I'd be I'd be surprised, you know. Okay, I'm gonna go straight from the pot here. He's on the white squares. Which makes him dangerous. Here you go. Don, this is for you. It's the mop rush. Sorry, give me a second. I'll, I'll be chat talkative and check the chat in just a minute. Gonna paint these fine little lines here. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna blow dry this. Give me just a second, and I'm gonna read your guys' chat while I'm blow drying. I promise. And I'm gonna unmute it, Paulo, so I don't even worry about dropping at me for that. All right, Mike's back on. Oh my God, guys, look, girls s or sorry, girls eighteen dot x y z says there's a new dating uh, for all tastes and ages. A new new a dating what what the hell? New a dating for all tastes and ages. Great, great. Uh, you know what? I'm not logged in as. Hold on, let me go here. I can do that. I can do it now. I'm at my computer. So how do I, okay, so I'm deleting the messages, but I don't do that, put this user in timeout. I can add them as a moderator to my channel, should I do that? I'm just gonna hide the user on the channel. There we go. So now we have a uh, sexy bot, whatever it name, whatever it name was, girls 18 XYZ is now a moderator. So they'll be able to comment pretty, pretty heartily. <laughs> Derek, look at that. You're recently singled. I got some sexy singles in my area just for you. Actually, you're 14. Shut up. You can't have that. <laughs> you need to like, just draw. Just draw, make comic books. Don't worry about girls right now. Too young for that. Having a girlfriend's fine and all, but you know what's better? It's honing a skill and practicing and getting better at something. It'll be much more lucrative for you in the long run. I also reported it. And I uh, hid it from this channel, so. I don't know. that. Yeah, that sucks, Don. Um, 
I don't know how your power grid. I, I do. I don't know. I don't know anything about a, a Belizean power grid, so I have no idea what to tell you. Um, I guess the power company. Call and see. Do you have like a power company you can call? And then just call them and see like if there is a uh, if there's a time frame because that's cool that their power's on. That means it's gotta be getting close, right? So you gotta think. I'm just. I'm. A, I'm a. Like a pampered American. I don't know. I'd be calling a bitch at the... I've been out with power for like two or three days at one time. In the in recent years. Um, because of an ice storm. And I was like, where's the power? You know, and I just... I know they're working on it. Like, I know they're working on it. So, I don't worry too much about it. But I don't know how, like, uh, Belize works. You said they're a pretty corrupt government. So, I don't know. I'm also an incredibly ignorant Kentuckian. Keep that in mind. So... I will, t I mean, that being said, though, I've been without power several times as a child. I was a very poor kid. Let's put it that way. I mean, there's times we went a week, week or so without power because the bill didn't get paid. So, <laughs> I get it. So, it's, it's as if, like, I was so poor as a kid, it's as if I were living in a third world country. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I was very poor as a child. Very, very poor. It's funny, too, because I work with... Uh, I work with somebody who... Uh, they're like... Oh, no, Mom wants to make me go get groceries. Like, it's they, they complain about just... Uh, uh, a very... Uh, Middle-class white person things. You know what I mean? In America. So, I'm just like... Shut up. <laughs> shut, shut up. <laughs> I don't have any sort of, like... Uh, uh, respect for your plight when it's a, a middle class white person problem, you know, third world country problems. And I was like, shit. Yeah. It's funny because I'm actually trying to be all crisp and clean with my painting here more so than usual, which I don't like. I like being quick and just slopping shit down and going to town with it. I've missed a ton of chat. I'm sorry. Let me. Uh, I did. I, I anti bought them, Jamie. Um, let's see. The Book of Life. Well, that's because, okay, so check it out. I have purple, red, and black. Uh, or Payne's gray, I kind of mix them. Those are my three palettes I have available. Listen, Dawn, when I start to paint green... Or purple, you may... Or actually green, because uh, I got purple here. When I start to paint, paint green, you may want to turn the turn the screen off. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Ryan. See, I mean, it's... I'm not, like, trying to be like, well, it was me. Because, I, I, you know, I'm not that way now. Because... And I think that's genuinely because I was that way as a kid. Like, I was like, I ain't doing this shit. I was like, I'm going to work my ass off and make sure I'm not in this situation. And what's really funny is, like, I don't really think it was because we had a lack of money. I think it was. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say anything. I don't. I don't want to because I know my parents, well, my mom at least, sometimes watches this channel. Um, it, it's just irresponsibility. I'll put it that way. Uh, financial irresponsibility is what really caused a lot of issues in our family. It, it's what caused us to be poor. White trash mentality is what I call it. Um, that's really what it was for the most part. So, you know what, guys? I mean, th I think it's safe to say that I'm uh, decently B U Z Z E D'd, but um, I'm doing some alright in the line painting. Like, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I say that and go out of the lines immediately. But compared to what I normally do, I normally just slot stuff on here. But, uh, alright. Maybe I need more limited edition bottles. Um, I did play Pokemon Go, um, Derek. When it first came out, man, me and my buddies were walking around my town all the time playing it. 2016 is when that was. Lord have mercy, that was six years ago. Derek, you were eight years old. Ugh. But, um, no, we, uh, we played it quite a bit when it first came out. Um, downtown here. 
And I played it a couple more times since then. Um, it's fun and I like the game. I just, I should be playing it because I, I go for a walk like literally every day. Like I do a 30 minute to, to an hour walk every day. And I should be playing Pokemon Go because it's just, it's free eggs, egg hatching and free Pokemon stops. And you know what I mean? I should be doing that, but I don't. I don't know. I, I, what I do is actually read while I walk. So that's what I prefer to do. Give me a second. I'm going to pause this and blow dry. Don is is upset that I can't get her more upset. You know what that means, Don? I don't think you're genuinely upset. I don't think it. <laughs> if you're upset, you can't get more upset. I mean, I can. I could just dump all the pain out onto the desktop here. What's funny? I need to change it though because, like, if you look, I've done some like cutting with exacto knives and stuff. So I've cut the vinyl, and so I've got. I know I have water seeping in front of that vinyl. I need to change this vinyl out. Uh, I'll do that this week if I can remember. I'll get a new piece of vinyl and, and change this whole desktop out. I really want to go back to my Doomsayer Designs background. that had the name on there and all my, my collage. I knew it made things hard to see when I was doing unboxings, but I haven't done those in a while. So, I might go back to that. Oh, I didn't even see that it hinted that Pokemon trainers eat Pokemon. That's funny. Well, thank you, Orion. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Paulo. Like, it's funny, dude. Like, I swear to God, I think me reading and walking, I've had so many people be like, well, that's amazing. It's n To me, it's not. Like, it's what I do. Like, I read and I walk. And what, what that does for me is, like, I didn't know that was such a fascinating thing because, like, I've had several people be like, wow, that's a crazy talent. And I'm like, that's not because my brain is constantly, it's the ADHD, man. It's constantly on 11. My brain is. It's its just switching channels all the time and it's awful and it sucks. But like when I'm reading and I'm walking, like I walk the same route every time. So I know what I'm walking. I, I know what I'm walking. I know, I know the curvature of the ground. I know where to stop. I know where to look for cars. So I walk on the sidewalk, and every time I get to a, a crosswalk, I stop, I look to make sure there's no one coming, and I go. But, like, I've never tripped, I've never fell. Um, people are like, oh, don't you fall? No, I've never fell. And what it is, is when I'm reading, honestly, I read better when I'm walking than I do when I can, like, sit down in a, in a, in a chair or sit down in the bed and read. Because, like, when I'm walking, my brain is too much, is too focused on walking to be distracted while I'm reading. If that makes any, If that makes any sense, it probably doesn't. But reading while I'm, I love reading while I walk. I love it. I'll, I'll sit there and I'll read a book while I walk. And I mean, that's how I finished um, uh, The God Equation by Michio Kaiku. I just finished um, The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. And it's like, it's my favorite way to read. I love it. I, I Now, I, I will say, it depends on the book. Like, I was reading, I'm reading Brave New World right now. And it's it's much more, I don't know, intricate than... Um, than say Hellbound Heart was. It's much. It's much more of a literary read, um, much more like a classical book. So it, it's a, a bit tougher to read for me, anyways, than the Hellbound Heart was. Because uh, Clyde Barker writes in a very understandable way, whereas um, Aldous Huxley writes in a much more fantastical, classical way. Um, like I couldn't read Lovecraft while walking, for example. Like he writes in a very detailed classical way and that's something i really need to sit down and read and analyze while i while i read it um like stephen king i can read while walking because he's a very readable reader uh writer so um i i don't know i just i just i don't know it's easy to me i don't know i just i, I never thought that was a big deal until like i've had people like tell me in the last year or so just like they're like oh wow i was just like that's it's it helps my adhd brain read so i don't know Maybe people need to try that. <laughs> I don't know. If you have ADHD, try reading and walking. Tell me what happens. Because it works It works well for me. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I think yeah, there's there's fewer there's more things you need to be pissed off about, Don, than uh, than me using my desk for a pallet. You don't have power. You've had it for a week. I'd be raging right now. Yeah, I haven't finished it yet. I'm only about a third of the way through it, uh, Brave New World. Um, I really like it. Okay, so I haven't seen that yet, Chapter 4. I think, I think I'm on... Maybe I'm on Chapter 4. I can't remember. I don't know. I'll have to read it. Finish it up, I should say. <laughs> you feel traumatized. Oh, no. <laughs> I saw some things. I'm traumatized. Um, you know what's really funny, uh, Anna? Look, I was reading Brave New World, and it, for some reason it kept reminding me of 1984. I've never read 1984. I have the book. I bought the book, and I have it. And I've never read it. And it's weird that you mention that, because I kept thinking of 1984 while I was... Uh, while I was reading Brave New World, that's so odd that you said that. I don't know. I just, that's very that's very weird. Um, no, I've not watched uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, I know that there is a Dreams of the Witch House story, and I know that there is a uh, Pikmin's Model story, and I'm super stoked about it. I'm very excited because I love Guillermo del Toro. So far, that man can do no wrong in my eyes. You know, I love Guillermo del Toro, so I expect it to be awesome, and I expect it to not be bad. So. Like, I love all... The, I, I don't know, like... I, I, what's some bad Guillermo del Toro stuff? I don't know of any bad stuff, honestly. Oh, if you guys want to know what I do here... So, I did the same thing with my, uh, my Doom Prompt... Un, or my uh, Doom Tober Prompt Undeath. Um, which was Jesus. <laughs> which was the most famous zombie. Um, I do my red, my, ye or my yellow, my red for my... My skin tones. And then I will go and I'll do a green over top of that. And then I'll dab it off. Like, I'll do, like, see how thick that is and how green that is? I'll just dab it. And it gives it, like, just a slightly green hue. It almost gives it, like, a greenish-brown hue. And I think it looks really cool and, like, sickly. You know what I mean? Like, it looks real awesome, I think. I think it works really well. To make something look, like, almost monstrous or decaying or something like that. So, there's your green... That's not super bright, so I'll wait for a second and let it soak in. There you go. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm, I'm missing some... Uh... All right, you see, Angela? I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you hung out with us. You've been here for like two hours. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you a whole lot. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. Have an even better week. Thank you so much. Uh, we need to keep our same message. Good. No book should be banned. That's so stupid. That's so friggin' stupid. It's so funny that that's coming back banning books. Shut up. Ban banned books are stupid. Um. Yeah, exactly. They're dystopian. Um, so it just makes perfect sense. Like, yeah, so far I love Brave New World. Um, I'll tell you what, though, if I have uh, had some grape juice that night, I cannot read Brave New World. Like, if it's something very, like, I don't know, prophetic or something classical or well-written. Not to say that, like, things that are easy to read aren't, aren't well-written. But, like, I can't, if I have to concentrate while reading it, I can't, I can't do it. Like, Stephen King's pretty easy to read while, uh... Well, you know, slightly inebriated because his specific, his whole thing was like he wanted to re uh, wrote or he wanted to write how he spoke. Like he's like, you need to write how you speak to people. It's like telling them a, a story, and so that's kind of cool though. Sorry, I'm burping and hiccuping everywhere. Oh, dude, Del Toro is a genius, and I cannot wait to watch it. I'm so excited. And, and yeah, I'm glad you like it, too, so that gives me high hopes for it. That's cool. I cannot wait. Uh, yeah, I read The God Equation, man. I loved it. I didn't understand a lot of it. Like, um, I love the whole uh, the whole saying of uh, uh, anyone that says they understand string theory doesn't understand, uh, understand string theory. <laughs> I like that because that's true. 
Because even the people who uh, are the foremost experts on string theory don't understand string theory. I'll tell you what, Christian, you know what's really funny? Um, the God Equation is what inspired my Setterson comic. Like, that's where I got the idea from. Because um, I don't know if you've read the set. I, I, I've shipped out a lot of them, and I've sold a lot of them, so I don't know if I've shipped you one. If I have and you've read it, I apologize. But in the in the Setterson comic, it is... Um, it talks about the strings. There's these strings that, that vibrate at these certain frequencies that um, essentially um, sing a tune. You know what I mean? And if one of the strings are out of tune, there is a certain character called the Watcher who has to go fix it and make sure it's in tune. Um, and the whole string idea was from a string theory concept, which was I got from Ichio Kaiku. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was... Yeah. I mean, I know I'm a big old dummy, but sometimes I read things that are... <laughs> <laughs> that are cool. <laughs> like I like uh, I like Kaiku. I like Dar uh, Darwin. I like uh, Dawkins. You know, I like uh, Hitchens. I love Hitchens. Um, what's funny is though, I haven't read a lot of their books. Um, I've just mainly watched a lot of their uh, their like uh, I, I can't think of the word. Sorry, I'm a bit um, juiced up. But yeah. Yeah, very gangrenous. That's kind of what I'm going for. See, like... Hold on. Let me see. I'm missing something. Oh, I plan on reading a lot of stuff. As long as I don't uh, die in the, like, the next... Uh, die before I can read those books, I should say. Uh, I plan on reading them. I have a huge list, man. There's so many books I want to read. and I, I just haven't had a chance. I, I do so much stuff besides writing. Like, if my hobby was reading and writing, it'd be different. But it's not. Like, my hobbies are everything. And, like, I want to do all these things. Like, that's the thing is I'm not... I'm not upset because I have so many different hobbies. I love it. I love that I, I, I read comic books. I read books. I draw. I paint. I play music. I I do. I, I write. Like I do so much different shit. Like I do tons. I play video games. But like I don't. I'm not mad that I have all those or upset. But like, it sucks because it's the whole jack of all trades and master of none type scenario. You know what I mean? Like I can't focus on one thing and become very knowledgeable about something because I mean. I would say I've read probably 2%, 3% of all the books I own. I have so many books. If you throw in comic books, it's ridiculous how, how few I've read. It's crazy. Because between books and comic books, I have thousands. Thousands I haven't read. Easily thousands. But it, And it sucks, too, because I really want to read them. I just don't have time. Give me a second. Let me, let me mute this. Let me dry this, and I'll be right back. Um, I'm not read Kafka. He's on my list to read. Um, I um, I'm, I love Sagan. I've loved Sagan for a long time. I've only finished... Um, oh, God. What is the book? This is not a time to ask me about literature I've read. Um, I started Demon Haunted World. What's the other... It's not Cosmos. What's the other really... Oh, my God. Hold on. Don't tell me. I'm just going to look it up. Sagan books. I just finished it. Or no, I'm sorry. Contact is what I was thinking. I finished Cosmos. Yeah, Cosmos is what I read. Contact is the fictional book I have not read. Um, I did finish Cosmos. Cosmos was amazing. It was very. I just love the fact that he he loved. He was the most passionate I've ever seen uh, uh, of any person in their field. He was so passionate about science and 
he wanted make he wanted to make sure that everyone could see science and experience it. You know, I thought that was really cool of him. I love Sagan so very much. And the stuff he complained, or the stuff he like brought to light, I say complain, I don't mean complain, but the stuff he brought to light when he was alive. Like I remember watching a um, an address he did at Congress in the '80s where he was talking about global warming. He's like, "Hey, this is a big deal. It's an existential threat that we all have to face." And I'm like, "Dude, that was in the '80s. You didn't even have friggin' Al Gore telling you, hey, global warming is bad.'" Can we put my? I really gotta get to getting on this. Sorry, I need to. I need to go back and read some of these comments. That next year when you retire, <laughs> that's awesome. I envy you. No, I haven't watched any playthroughs of Amori yet. Um, I watched some gameplay of it, though. I really have. Like, I really watched some gameplay, and I thought that was kind of cool. Because I remember there was one night I looked it up. Because I was thinking of games that, like, play for Halloween. Which I never ended up playing any games for Halloween. Because I just don't have time. Uh, but Omori was one of them I watched gameplay through uh, for. Uh, actually, I watched gameplay for Omori the first time you'd mentioned it to me. And I was like, this definitely seems like my kind of game. It's 8-bit horror. It's cool. But I haven't watched any gameplay. I don't, I don't know enough about it, though. Um... Let me see. I'm missing a lot of stuff. Let me go back up. And the present cause on Kafka. That's cool. I didn't get that reference. Okay, that's cool. I love Sagan, yeah. Um, closet encounters of the nerd kind. A spoof of close encounters. I'll check it up. Check it up. Check it out. Sorry. I can't talk right now. Oh, Christian, I've not, uh, I've not read near 5,000 books. No, that's crazy. I've not, that's crazy. That, yeah, it's, a, it's an insane amount of books to read to me. You know, I've not read near that. So, I don't want to act like I have. So, like, I try, to, that's the thing, is like, I've read a bunch of different kinds of books, but I haven't ever focused on one type of book and read a bunch of them. Like, um, as much as I love Neil Gaiman, I haven't finished any of his books. I started American Gods. I'm not done with it. Um, I started Norse Mythology. I've not finished it. I read the first trade paperback of uh, Sandman, which I think is like the first five or six issues. I'm, I'm, I suck, I know. Um, I would say the most I've read of any author is either Stephen King or um, R.A. Salvatore. I've read a lot of... I've probably... I've read... I can say a lot. I've read seven R. Salvador books. And I've probably read ten Stephen King books. Maybe. I don't know. I read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft, though, too. He didn't write a lot of books. He wrote a lot of short stories. So I don't count that. Uh, okay. No problem, Don. I'm glad you hung out with us. Have a good night. I really appreciate it. And I hope you get your power back on. That sucks. Have a good night. I appreciate it. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm going to go back up. There's a lot of chat going on, so I'm sorry if I've missed your guys' comments or questions. If I've missed your questions, just keep reading it. I'm the Jake of all trades. You're the Jane of all trades. <laughs> Z Zelezny? Zelezny? I, I don't know who that is. I've never read that. Psycho Shop. Okay. Um, I, so, Philip K. Dick, I did buy, um, I did buy, do Robot's Dream of Electric Sheep. Electric Sheep. I, I haven't read it yet. But I have, I do, I do own. I started it and never finished. It's one of those books I started and never finished. Um, it's on my list. I do want to read. Um, I haven't read anything else by Philip K. Dick, but uh, I knew it was the Blade Runner guy. 
the guy that wrote, you know, well, you know, Blade Runner movie is based off that book. I heard Jim Butcher's good. I've never read Jim Butcher. Um... Yeah, Christian, man, like, I've, I, I, I did the speed reading thing, and I started working on it and stuff, and, like, was able to read pretty fast, like, but it just, I don't, re I, I guess it's with the ADHD, I don't know, but I don't retain shit, like, at all when I speed read. I cannot retain anything. It's so hard for me to retain, like, I can read it and get the page, and by the time I'm on the next page, I've forgotten the first page. So, well, take care, Paulo, I appreciate you, man. Have a good night. Oh, that's cool, Absinthe. I like that. See, and that's that's one thing. Like, my girlfriend, she would like... It's funny because she read a ton until, like, I started reading. Then she kind of quit reading. And, like, I was like, come on, read a book. Like, I was telling her... It's funny, I mentioned that today. And I was like, come on, let's read some books together. And she's like, okay, I don't want to read. And, like, she has to be in the mood to read. But, like, I've gotten in the mood to read recently. And I, I keep wanting her to read with me, and she won't. It's funny, though. <sighs> Because it's funny you guys keep mentioning stuff that I've just talked about. So, it's all, it always happens that way, though. Okay, I gotta, I really gotta get to painting. I'm usually done by now, so <laughs> I'm gonna get back to painting. I got a bit to go before I finish up. Oh, I still gotta write it out and stuff, too. Okay, and for some reason I'm wanting to do brown for the base, so that's what I'm going to do. Let this stuff dry. What's funny is that, like, all the colors I've combined kind of just looks like brown. But they all have their own little variation, like yellow and green and red. And, like, I love that. Because I'm doing solid brown here, and I'm realizing how different it is from the other uh, brown I've made up top. It's pretty cool. Because, you know, I make brown. See, that's weird, though. Like, I, I remember I read the, um, the last time I read anything on the Kindle was The Hobbit. I read that, like, last Christmas. And, like, I just, like, it was fun. Like, I, I don't mind reading on the Kindle. But I really just love holding a book. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It'd probably be better if I, if I read it on the Kindle. Like, I could have, I wouldn't have all this shit. <laughs> you know? Okay, sorry, I'm trying to read this. Uh... I get it. Yeah, as much as I hate Bezos, I get it. As much as I hate Bezos as well, I order from Amazon. I can't say that I don't. It sucks. But I mean, when you're the uh, number one place to order anything ever online, and you're in the middle of a pandemic, and you need to make, you know, you need to order stuff without going out in the, in the public, which actually I've kind of given that up. I've kind of given up caring about going into public I don't really wear my mask anymore um, I do if I see uh, people wearing their masks I will I will intentionally avoid them to make sure you know I'll, I'll at least do that if I see like an old person I try to avoid them because I just think on the off chance that I have COVID and they had, they're going to get it you know I, I still try to do that and stuff but I, I don't really wear a mask anywhere I, I, I'm not trying to sound like one of those people that are just like over it but I'm kind of over it. I ain't gonna lie. I've done so much, man. I'm just so burnt out on like not living my life. There's only so many, so much of my time I can give up. You know what I mean? And I've given up the last like three damn years, and it ain't gonna get better because most people don't give a shit. So, you know, I guess they win. Whatever.
I gotta paint some. I'll look at the chat in just a second. If you're talking to me, I do apologize, but I will check in just a moment. Broskies, I have drank more than intended. Let's put it that way. I'm hungry, too. Man, I haven't eaten much today. Y'all like this music? This is radi I, I, I can't hear it, but I know what I'm playing. Uh, this is Radiation Storm. I already mentioned earlier it was by White Bad Audio. Carl at White Bad Audio. But the song's called Radiation Storm. And I've had it on uh, streams before, and it's awesome. Let's see. Oh man, that's awesome. You guys going to book date? That's incredible. I love that. Yeah, I agree, Anna. That's super sweet. I like that a whole lot. That'd be my favorite kind of date. Like, I actually went today and bought... Um, let me see if I can see them here. I bought the Jim Morrison autobiography because um, I didn't have it. I don't know there's several, but I, it's one I didn't have. Um, what the hell else? I bought Lisey's Story uh, in hardback the Stephen King book. I bought two Terry Pratchett books, which I haven't really read any of. I have a lot of Terry Pratchett books, but I've never read them. Um, and I can't remember the other one I bought. Shit. You know what's wild, though? Um, the last time I bought books, I, I get a Goodwill sometimes to try to find books. You can get it for like a dollar a piece. But the, because, especially in my area, because no one reads a book here because, well, everyone's really dumb. Um, the last time I went and actually bought books at my local Goodwill... Not including the very last time, you know, time before that. I found uh, Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses and Charles Darwin's uh, The The Evolution of Life. And I thought that was, um, that was real funny. <laughs> that those have been donated to my local Goodwill. I'm Because I live in a very, 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 like, conservative Christian area. So the fact that I have The Satanic Verses and The, uh, the or, sorry, the, I said The Evolution, The Origin of Life. Um, is very funny to me because I mean that's that seriously like it would not surprise me if my town got together and was like hey we need to burn these books like that would I would be very not surprised at all that's how backwards ass this this town is but it's just funny that that's the two books I found there I haven't read either one but I started reading the uh, the origin of life uh, origin of a species what am I saying the origin of a species what's wrong with me I got there eventually um let's see Oh, that sucks. I closed your Barnes and Noble, man. Yeah. <laughs> you would be real pretty if you smiled more. What a dick thing to say to people. Yeah, you should be like, yeah, you'd be a lot prettier if you lost weight. So you should tell you should tell the guy that. You'd be a lot prettier if you'd get some muscle mass by going to the gym. What's, like, I didn't mind the mask. I'm just like, I don't care anymore. And I hate saying, I hate sounding like those stupid ass Republicans. I just don't care. And I've been vaccinated to the gills, you know what I mean? Like, I got my first booster, or my first shot, my, my second shot with the Moderna. I've gotten every booster since. I just recently got, like, less than a month ago, got my, or it was about a month ago, I got my, uh, my Omicron shot. Um, I need to go get my flu shot. I haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not against being protected or doing things that are like reasonable for for protecting society. I'll get all my vaccines. That's fine. But I ain't gonna get one every time a new variant comes out. I've already gotten like, I think I've gotten three this year. 
two boosters and uh, an Omicron shot. I'm pretty sure I've gotten three booster, three shots this year. I'm done. That's fine. Three and three years fine for me. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, you're right. I'm on the buckle of the Bible Belt. That's why. That's how I always say it. I'm on the buckle of the Bible Belt, and it sucks. Like there, like I was thinking about that today because I'm driving around and all I saw was just like Republican this, Republican because uh, voting. I don't if you're not from America, um, voting day is essentially November the eighth every two to four years. So the midterm elections are uh, November the eighth, and all you see around here are just like Republican this, Republican that. I'm pro life, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. Go kill yourself. I just hate it because my vote doesn't matter where I'm at. It does not matter. My, um, the area I live in, um, voted 80%, 80% for Trump, 80% of my population voted for Trump, not in 2016, in 2020. After four years of Trump, 80% of my area, my county voted for Trump. That's astonishing. Like, I would give it to you much more in 2016. Because Hillary was garbage. Hillary sucked. But I would have I, I would have voted for her over Trump. I didn't vote for either one of them. Um, but I would have voted for her over Trump if I had to, like, gun to my head, I would have had to vote for one. But, um, my God, dude. 80% for Trump is astonishing after four years of Trump. It's just, oof. There's a hope for our asses here. Like, it is, like, driving today around town, like, having to get through church traffic made me want to kill myself. It was awful. Like, if you go to church, it's totally fine. I, I don't want to, like, disparage you from going to church. Go to church if you like church. That's totally fine. I don't care. But, man, y'all are annoying as hell when it comes to traffic. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. There's so many of you out at one time. It's, uh, it's pretty brutal. But, you know. And what kills me, too, is that, like, they're always talking about, like, uh, for example, I saw an interview the day with a guy talking about, it was a preacher, and he was talking about how he feels persecuted against because, you know, white Christians are just so persecuted against in this country. And he was talking, it was, oh, no, it wasn't an interview, it was a Jordan Klepper thing. Um, he was talking about how, um, you know, you know uh, white, uh, white Christians are just discriminated against and yada, yada, yada. And, it, like, the LGBT thing. He's like, oh, it's so, you know, they, they have to push it in your face. And it was funny because Jordan Klepper did this interview with this pastor where he's talking about, yeah, just the LGBT community. He's like, they can do what they want to do, but, man, they have it all in my face. And he's like, I don't like that. I don't like them having it in my face, and they should just keep it to themselves. And, yeah, while they were doing this interview, they were in front of, like, a 300-foot statue of Jesus, like, that was on the side of the road. He's like, yeah, you don't like them just brandishing their uh, their beliefs everywhere, right? And he's like, yeah. It's... <laughs> It's the lack of, uh, the lack of self-awareness. It's, it's so funny how, like, so many, like, super conservative Christians and, like, super, like, Republicans are completely unaware of self-awareness. You know what I mean? Like, they have no idea what irony is. They don't see it. It's, it's astonishing to me. Like, it has to be a joke. Like, they're not that dumb. I don't know. It's crazy. And that's me. That's me, Teresa. I, I haven't had COVID this uh, twice this last year. I've had COVID once in, I think, 2021 I had it. And then I had it in, uh, I don't know, 2021's a blur. I don't remember any of that shit. Um, I had COVID once this year. Um, and once in 2021. I can't not get it, dude. If I'm around someone that has it, I will for sure get it. It's crazy. As much as I've been, now granted, I haven't had it bad at any point. As much as I've been vaccinated and as much as I've been like, cautious and wearing a mask i get it every single gd time it doesn't matter i get it every time I'm around someone with it it's crazy oh, good night ryan i'm glad to see you i'm glad you stopped in i appreciate it thank you so much have a great i hope to see you next week ryan it's been a super fun uh super super fun stream this week so far i love it had a lot of people come. I, I love just that's the thing is like I like talking to you guys. I don't really care about the like the because uh, granted it it does help with interactions and stuff when you guys comment and talk in the in the chat and stuff for like the algorithm of YouTube. I don't really give a shit about that. I don't care. 
I don't care about that. I, I, I just care about having a good conversation while I'm drawing my pictures. <laughs> Those stupid chess pieces, because I'm an idiot. I don't know, that's fun to me. So, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Thank you. So, I gotta make sure I get this done soon, which I'm fine. I got plenty of time. Because my reading time is usually right before I go to bed. And that's usually around. Listen, I'm an old man. Or at least I feel like one. I feel like I'm 80 most of the time. Because I go to bed around like 10 30. And I get up at 5 a.m. So, <laughs> and the thing is, it's not that like I have to. I just really like getting up that early. I love getting up early in the morning and having that whole morning where it's just nice and quiet and I can have the house to myself and I can sit around, I can write, I can read. Or I can go to work early if I need to, you know? If I gotta get some stuff done, I'll go in early. And I just I just enjoy it, you know? Of course, we went purple with the background, green with the eyes. I'll do a little bit more uh, coloring on the eyes, though. Because I actually missed a pupil. And, uh, you know, put some shadows on it. And I do love how I can just, like, let watercolors dry out and then just reactivate them. It's so great. God, it's so great. Let me finish coloring this background. I'll read the chat. Give me just a second. Y'all, I am pretty... I'm pretty hammered. I ain't gonna lie. I better take those sips to, you know... Oh, tell me what your game is, uh, your, your game idea is, Derek. Let me know. I love that stuff. Oh, dude, Christian, I'm a total idiot. That's the thing. The um, My favorite philosophical principle is, I think it was a Socrates, uh, a Socrates quote. He said, the first step to, uh, what is it? I can't remember. It's essentially along the lines of the first step to becoming any sort of, to, to, to becoming, oh, what is it? God, I can't remember. It was, I'm pretty sure it was Socrates, and he said it along the lines of like the first, um, the first step towards gaining any sort of enlightenment or uh, self-progress or educating yourself is to learn that you know nothing. You know what I mean? Like, that's. It was funny because the Socratic method of, of arguing things, Socrates' whole point was he's like, I don't have a stance on this. He's like, I don't have an opinion. Socrates literally got killed. They killed him because he just wouldn't shut the fuck up. He just wouldn't shut up. He wouldn't quit arguing with everybody. And he just argued with the Socratic method of, uh, of debating, and it pissed people off so bad. Like, they even gave him a chance to leave before they killed him. They were like, you can get out of here. We're going to execute you tomorrow. Get out of the city. And he's like, no, no, go fuck yourselves. I ain't leaving. And like, even all the people that was like super big followers of Socrates were like begging him to leave. And he wouldn't leave because fundamentally they were all wrong. And he was right because they argued points with like logical fallacies. And it was just awesome because he's like, they were like, People would like uh, criticize him for being like, you know, he oh he thinks he's so smart. He's like, no, I don't know anything. He's like, I'm not smart at all. I don't know anything. I just know that your argument's invalid, and it just pissed people off so bad. It's great. I don't know. Sorry, give me just a second. I'll mute this. Well, I appreciate you all. I don't think it's great, but uh, I appreciate the uh, the compliments. Thank you so much. 
Um, let's see. No, hold on. Where's my? There it is. Got it. Pacha. Oh, I need to go back to the uh, green. I forgot about that. Let me outline this. Let actually let me answer the chat first because let's see. Well, thank you, Anna. I appreciate it. Killing it tonight. Thank you so much. I, I, like I said, I don't think so, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Give yeah, Teresa. That's me, man. I love I love getting up at uh at, at five ish like it depends on the day five five thirty I sometimes get a little later, um as long as I go to bed at like ten ten thirty I'll get up at five oh, I just love that quiet man I'll get up and have my coffee in the morning I don't I should probably do tea but I do coffee I love coffee um I'll have my coffee in the morning I'll usually write my journal or I'll draw or now if I if I have my comic book uh, scripted out and I'm ready to draw it I'll spend all morning drawing it like I'll go into work I usually go into work early. But I'll go into work at like right at 8 a.m. or 8:30, and go in a little bit late if I'm if I'm in the middle of drawing a page. But I'll try to draw and ink my page, my comic book. But I'm trying to get my script done this week so I can start doing that. But usually, I, yeah, I get at 5 a.m. I'll either read or write my journal or draw, um, unless I'm going to work early. Uh, but it's just awesome, man. It's awesome. It really helps me out. Like I'll get up and I'll meditate and stuff, and it's just like 10 minutes, not much. But it's just really good to kind of get your day started. You know, like I really like it. I love getting to work early and there's no one being there. It really helps me start my day. Uh, it's going to be a big game in the curtain, uh, current time. Certain times the game will be 3D. Oh, that sounds cool. That sounds really cool, Derek. You got to make that stuff, man. Well, thank you, Troy. I'm glad you're liking this piece. <laughs> it's funny, Christian. You said coffin. And I, I assumed you meant coffee, but I was just thinking coffin anyways because it was much funnier. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Oh, I missed that too. Basically, sparring practice for your immune system. It's right, Anna. It's what it is. Keeping it on its toes, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're a, a vampire hours for you. What's funny is like, um, I, I, like if I didn't have to get up in the morning, like, I probably would be a night person. But I have to get up in the morning to go to work and stuff. But if I didn't have to do that, I probably end up would be a night person. But like, I, staying up super late doesn't work for me because I think I end up being late for work the next day. So getting up way earlier seems to work for me more. God, getting to bed around 4 or 5 8? Well, you gotta work though, so that makes sense. Yeah, dude, get, going to work at 6 and getting off at 3 is pretty sweet. My girlfriend kind of does the same thing. Like, she gets up at like 4.30 and she's at work at like 5. So And she gets off at like 2 in the afternoon, so she... Like she, and there's a thing like I've told her several times like hey why don't we go get lunch or something she's like no because then I have to leave work later <laughs> I'm like all right I guess um oh poor I said they had to work day shift for a year <laughs> oh yeah dude if 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 my job gave me a ten percent differential I'll be yeah I would definitely be working it more. At night time. But uh, we are only open 8 to 5 during the day, so. That makes sense, man. But, I don't know, like, one of the things I've really, like, uh, I'm just going to kind of talk while I draw here. It's going to take me a second out on this. One of the things I've really come to learn, um, I've, like I said, I've done a lot of studying, I've done a lot of meditating, I've done a lot of, like, philosophizing, on just like life in general and just what I need to do in my life to make myself happy. And I know this sounds really dumb and really basic, but the thing I need to do to be happy is just to be happy. Like do things that make me happy. That's how you that's how you be happy. And like most of my 20s, like my 20s were absolutely miserable. I hated my 20s. I didn't know it at the time, but looking back, I hated my 20s. The like 
I, I was super stressed over work. That's all I did. I was really, really overweight. Like, I'm, I'm overweight now, but not like I was in my 20s. I was really overweight. Like, really, like morbidly obese overweight. And, like, I hated myself. I, my mental health was absolutely atrocious. It was in the shitter for sure. Um, I didn't know any sort of, like, self-awareness or responsibility for my actions. It was just awful. And I just blamed everything on everyone else. And, and I realized, like, it took me getting closer to the end of my 20s and, and into my 30s. That really made me realize that, like, it was me not being self-aware, like I said, and responsible for my actions is what was making me so miserable. Because there's so many flaws that, like, my, um, I had gotten from my parents um, and my raising and stuff. There's, like, not being able to take responsibility for your own actions, blaming everything on something else. Like, oh, you know, it's just bad luck. I just have the worst luck ever, blah, blah, blah. Luck doesn't exist. Shut up. Luck, luck ain't a thing. you got to take responsibility for your own actions. You can change your own life at a whim. Like, it took me a lot of, like, really, like, self-exploration to learn like it literally years like i literally had to write for years and learn about myself for years watch a lot of philosophy videos read a, philosoph a lot of philosophical books to really understand that and i think the best way to live your life honestly is with the is with stoic principles like like i said i always talk about marcus aurelius because he's just amazing um and like i don't know man it's just learning all that really like my, like I said, my 20s were miserable. Miserable. Uh, getting into my 30s really helped me, like, because I was like, man, I gotta change something. I'm gonna die. Uh, dude, you, like, seriously, like, I'm bald. Like, I'm not bald, but, like, I am. Like, I have a huge bald spot. And I swear to God, it's because I was so stressed in my 20s. Like, I had super long hair. Like, my entire life, since the last time I had a full-fledged haircut, apart from when I shaved my head, was the first day of, uh, it was the day before my first day of senior year of high school. It's the last time I cut my hair. Ever since then, I had super long hair. I loved, I was in a heavy metal band, man. I had long hair, loved my long hair. And then my, my 20s, man, I started going, getting real thin, real thin back here. And I was like, oh God. Then I realized how thin I was when I was like 28. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I shaved this off. It was a big, thin spot back here. And it, I looked like the Crypt Keeper, like that fucking statue I just showed you guys earlier. But, like, so I shaved it all off, and, like, it's, I guarantee, like, 100%, you cannot convince me it was not because I was so stressed in my 20s. Because there's not a bald person in my family. There's no per my grandpa, like, my and grandma both died at 80 years old. And they both had a full head of hair. Like, there's no, like, my great-grandparents did, my parents aren't bald. Like, why the hell did I have a giant bald spot at 20 years old? Like, it took me, like, that was part of it, I swear. That was part of my thinking of, like, why did I go bald? That's why it helped me transition to be like, oh, I'm so stressed out. I need to chill the fuck out. And that's what I did, man. Like, I, I started going to, like, I went to a therapist some. I went to a psychiatrist and really tried to get a hold of my mental health. Because forever, I thought I was in that mentality of, like, mental health is something you can control on your own. You can just control it, deal with it. It's, it's... You know, it's just for the weak people, like medicine and therapy and stuff like that. And it took me a long time to realize that it was just my raising that made me believe that way. And the more I learned about it, I was like, oh, I'm just a psycho. That's all it is. I'm just an absolute, absolute psycho, and I need to chill out. And, like, I made the people around me miserable. And, like, me and my girlfriend been together forever. She was in my 20s. And I feel bad because I was just, I was, oh, I was my dad. And my dad was an absolute maniac when I was a kid. I mean, screaming, yelling, cussing, throwing dishes. Just a maniac. And I didn't throw I didn't throw dishes and shit like that. Like, I wasn't that bad. Like, I would throw, like, video game controllers, shit like that. Like, I would... But, like, when I was by myself. I wouldn't do it with, like, around her. But, like, man, it's it sucks, man. Like, I feel bad. I feel bad for, uh... For, you know, how I behaved in my 20s because... I just didn't know how to, uh, I didn't know how to deal with it. I really didn't know how to deal with it. And, like, learning how to deal with it as I got older, I feel much better and much calmer now because like, I can I can manage myself. But it doesn't change the uh, the people I affected when I was in my 20s, you know? Sorry, I'm having a therapy session online here, and I probably shouldn't be doing that, but I can't help it. I've had too much great juice to stop me. Yeah, simplified meditation is super important. I agree.
I agree, Epsanthe. It's very hard to be self-aware when you're young. You don't know, uh, especially when you're not taught how to do it. Yeah, it's crazy. If you think your 20s are the best time of your life, you're an idiot. Like, you, th that sucks for you because the rest of your life is going to be even worse. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, 20s is chaos. Yeah, I agree. In 30s, when you settle in, who you are. Jake, just wait for your hair. Puberty. <laughs> Coming over. That's good. <laughs> your hair. I got nose hair. I got plenty of that, so I'm sure I'll be getting your hair soon, too. Oh, I agree. Your, yeah, your frontal lobe. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's one of my... Um, big arguments for like um I don't recommend anyone drinking or doing drugs or anything like that until they're uh until they're in their mid twenties. And then do all the drugs and drinking you want. Because yeah, your frontal lobe's not fully developed until you're like anywhere from twenty twenty to twenty three years old. Boy my lines are real real bad right now. Where is my good what pin? This pen sucks. I'm gonna grab one of these good white pens. This is a new one, but I'm gonna put it back in here. I can't find my really good white pen. This one's kind of bad. All right. Ugh. Ugh. That's the one bad thing about these pens. When they start getting uh, like halfway down, they start getting really like transparent, which is weird. They should still work. God, it sucks. I gotta do all these. Why did I draw all these tentacles? I'm an idiot. I should have just done like an orb or a square. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> something not with something not full of tentacles. Sorry, give me just a second. I'll check the chat if you're saying something here in just a second. <clears throat> well, thank you, Christian. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's definitely true, uh, Absinthe. Because my, uh, I mean, my emotional control center was definitely developed at 22, but it was just unstable. You know what I mean? Like I was never violent towards people. Don't 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 think it. Like, don't think that. But I've always had anger issues. I have really bad anger issues. Until the last few years, I've really learned to control that and just just take things as you will, you know. But man, like I didn't know. Cause like my dad is was really. Uh, I didn't know it when I was a kid because you know you don't know shit when you're a kid. You're stupid. Um, but my dad was incredibly self-conscious when I was a kid. I didn't realize that. He was very fragile. He had he suffered from fragile masculinity so bad. It was crazy. I never realized it. Because I didn't even know what the hell that was when I was a kid. <clears throat> but um, the older I got, man, I realized that. And I was like, oh, Jesus. I, like, I kind of felt bad for him. Because, like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I love my dad. But, like, I got a lot of bad traits from him. Of like his anger and his inability to be criticized and his lack of uh, taking responsibility for his own actions. I mean, I got all that. And that's my mom, too. Mom's real bad for, like, she's really self-conscious. My dad's really self-conscious. And, like, uh, they're, they're, they cannot take criticism. They cannot take criticism because any criticism is a form of attack. You know what I mean? And, like... Where I have uh, went and spent so much time learning, like, philosophical principles and how you should accept your responsibility for your actions and, and stuff like that, I try to explain that to them and they think I'm criticizing them. And I'm like, it's not, I mean, I, I guess I am criticizing, but not in, like, a malicious way. I'm not trying to criticize them to, to, to try to attack them. I'm doing it to try to make them better. But they're in their mid-50s. I mean, what the hell are they going to do? They ain't going to do shit. They ain't going to change anything now. But, like, I'm trying to keep, keep myself... <clears throat> With the open mind, because I know you have, like, 
as a younger person, you have like a liquid memory, and then when you get older, you have crystal memory, and you just you you are set in your ways. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that anyone can change. The human mind's pretty amazing. I'm just saying. I think anyone can change their beliefs at any point. It just becomes harder with age. Is all I'm saying. Um, but I, I'm I'm making a vow to where like I'm gonna make sure that I can change my beliefs if the the reality of the situation or whatever I'm dealing with, you know, aligns with that. I think that's that I think that's fair to say, you know. Uh have a good night, Teresa. I appreciate it. I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Oh, it could definitely be a card for sure. Oh dude, yeah, the um the Presto Jumbo correction pins. Oh my god. Mwah. Love this thing. Love it. Uh, my coping skills are inappropriate humor. Nurse also love Mash. As a kid. Yeah, I loved Mash when I was a kid. And then it got all serious. I thought that was I like Mash with the laugh track. If that makes any sense. Usually I hate laugh tracks, but I like Mash with the laugh track. In inappropriate humor. Yeah, that's my coping skill too. Yeah, I couldn't resist drawing tentacles for sure. Yep, so I'll do I'll do this for my card game. I hope, like, I'm shooting to get my card game done. Shooting to get it done by, like, next summer. That's the, I want to have it done done then. Like, tested and, and printed and everything. That's the goal. We'll see. You know, I got my comic book to get done with in this year, too. They really should, Epson. They should teach mindfulness and coping skills in school, and they don't do that. Cat hurting is important stuff. I agree with that. I have to do that every day. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I, need to, I need to clear this up right here. <clears throat> All right. I got my favorite pen ever to write my journal with, which is my Pilot G2. It's a 10, not a 7, not a 5. I need that big bold tip. Like, I had to specifically order these off of Amazon because I couldn't find them anywhere because no one has these damn pens. But, like, I, saw, I love that big bold tip on my, pen, on my uh, journals and stuff. So, that's what you need. That's what you need to be a professional journalist. So, um, this piece is going to be called The Blind Idiot. Okay. So, and yes, I write in cursive. Shut up. I don't hear you're complaining about it. Also, I'm pretty, uh, like I said, inebriated. I don't know how well I can write. <clears throat> the blind idiot. So. Yeah, I guess it starts in a random location. I like that. This piece starts in a random location determined by a D sixty four. It's sixty four. I'm pretty sure sixty four spaces. <clears throat> See, Troy, we're kindred spirits. You know that. Uh, it starts in a random location determined by D sixty four roll. Whatever. Was it square? Whatever. Yeah, I guess square. Whatever. I don't care. Square. It lands on. The piece. 
is destroyed. Not captured, it's destroyed. It's captured. Or it's destroyed, yeah. <clears throat> this piece cannot be captured. Cannot be captured. Every three turns. Sorry, I'm trying to write and like, I can't really read the, the comments that much. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's uh, like, yeah, I mean, my handwriting's gross. This is awful. This is like a third grader hand, like doing cursive. Well, a third grader when I was a kid doing hand cursive because they don't do that anymore. As Troy said, it's a secret code for the youngins. I work with someone who is 22, I think they're 22, 23 years old, and like they have a hard time reading my cursive. <laughs> um, every three turns, roll a, um, a D8. Yeah, I'm incorporating Dungeons and Dragons as a chest. Suck it. A D8 to determine a random direction. Random direction, and I'm going to do like right here. I'm going to put like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one is up, two is down. That's Dom, whatever, I don't care. Uh, three is left, that's right. Um, what would, um, diagonal, up, left, diagonal, I guess? Five is up, left, diagonal. Oh, God. <laughs> diagonal. There's no, is there an E in diagonal? Uh, there is an E in diagonal, right? No, there's not. There's not an E in diagonal. How do you spell diagonal? Hold on. That's why I don't write on the screen because I'm, I'm an illiterate moron. Hey, I'm not an illiterate moron. I knew there was an E there, but I wrote it anyways. All right, so we're good. Um, all right. Up left diagonal. And then six is up right diagonal. Diagonal. Diagonally. A L. There we go. Um, then down left. Diagonal. God, my writing is so sloppy, especially after I drink wine. It's awful. And then down right, diagonal. Can you see this? Yeah, we can see this. <clears throat> okay, so then we're going to go... Okay, so I wasn't... Yeah. Diagon Alley. Yeah, see, I said the same thing. Diagon Alley. Mm. Chocolate Frog. All right, so let's see. Move this piece in whatever I 
I'm gonna do right here. Direction that was rolled. Until sorry if I'm being boring here, it reaches. I can't really talk to people and also like write reaches. I'm trying, but uh, I don't know how well I can do that. The board. I have to have the words in my head before I do it, and it's hard for me to have more than like two or three words in my head before I <laughs> before I try to talk. Um, it reaches the end of the board. Every piece it encounters is destroyed and removed from the game. There we go. All right, so we got the blind idiot. I think we're done. Um, sorry if everyone's left. I bored you to death with me writing stuff. Um, thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. So we got the blind idiot here. This piece starts in a random location determined by a D64 roll to determine where it starts out on the on the, D the 64 square grid. Whatever square it lands, um, whatever square it lands, the piece is destroyed. This piece cannot be captured. Every three turns, roll a d8 to determine a random direction. Up, down, left, right, up, left, diagonal, up, right, diagonal, down, left, diagonal, down, right, diagonal. Move this piece in whatever direction that was rolled until it reaches the end of the board. Every piece it encounters is destroyed and removed from the game. And no one wins with this guy. It just is an absolute agent of chaos that just destroys everything in its path. Uh, but yeah, we're done. Um, yeah, we're done. Uh, but I, I hope you guys enjoyed the piece. It was fun to draw. I don't love it, but it's fun to draw. It's super fun to draw. It's a good little, like, uh, tentacled, eyeball -y piece. I would totally play with a chess set like this because I love stupid rules. Uh, but yeah. So, thank you all so much for watching and hanging out. Let me finish my uh, grape juice. If you get a drink, you know, finish it up. We'll, we'll cheers to it. But I'm, I'm gonna finish mine. Have a good night. I do appreciate you all. You know I do. I love this more than anything. Hang out on Sundays. So, thank you, Derek. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Anna. I appreciate it. Thank you, Absinthia. I appreciate it. Uh, you all are awesome. I appreciate hanging out with... Like, I really do. Like, and if someone misses, like, don't get me wrong. I ain't trying to make you feel bad. Like, I tell understand if... Shit happens. Life happens. I mean, I've canceled streams, so it's fine. But just know that if, you, if you're not here on a Sunday and, like, you're one of the staples... And you know if you're one of the staples... Um, I feel bad. I feel bad you're not here. I'm like, oh man, I wish you were here. Um, but thank you all for showing up and hanging out with me and making this an awesome stream. I do really appreciate it. You all have a great night. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And keep on drawing on. Later all. Love you guys. Have a good night. Have a great week and I'll see you next weekend.